and welcome to the Midlife Gamer Podcast. Today is Sunday the 26th of May 2019 and my name is Darren Baldock and joining me at the table, yes you heard it right ladies and gentlemen, joining me at the table right opposite me is the gorgeous Mr Matthew Moore. Say hello Matthew. Hello. And we have a special third chair in place for the, um, for the delightful and the most wonderful, generous host that we've uh, we've experienced over the last 24 hours or so, uh, Mr. Richard Forder, who um, who has, uh, I guess, for want of a better phrase, successfully secured us for a <laughs> home invasion. Uh, how are you, Rich? You okay? I'm um, brilliant, thank you. Okay, so we, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick back, relax, and enjoy episode 288 of the Midlife Gamer Podcast, Home Invasion. 2019. So then, Rich. Hello. You're a you, you're a long time listener of the show. I hope. Yes. That's but... okay. That's a fiver. That's already cost me already. Indeed. This is going to be an expensive show. Um, do you want to do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Introduce yourself to the listeners and uh, and potentially how you came about to have us here right in front of you. Uh, right. So your arrival all stems from last MLGX in Birmingham. Uh, the auction, to be specific, and uh, it was it was for charity. Charity, it mate. It was for charity. Yeah. So uh, I usually try and uh, get involved and buy something at the auction. Yeah. Um, and having uh, already bought, I think I've got the t- bought some set of tanks already, and the, the alcohol was flowing of as course, it does, yes. as it does. And uh, I got involved in the bidding for the home invasion. Um. It was intentional in as much as I intended to bid. It wasn't necessarily <laughs> intentional as in I intended to win that bid. Because usually I like to I bid on a lot of things and just push the prices up a bit more because that way we get more for charity. Yeah, that's dangerous um, that is though, Richard. Yeah, it, it was dangerous in as much as it got to at the amount that I eventually won with <laughs> and the room had gone quiet. Yeah, that was when that was your oh shit moment. Yeah, because I I was it was more not how I was going to accommodate it. That was fine. It was more crap. How am I going to tell Olivia that uh, we've got a home invasion planned and we need to do that at some point next year? And um, yeah, so I was kind of expecting all all manner of things. Mm, and I was quite lucky that actually I'd got sort of however many miles it is from Birmingham to Sheffield between us at the moment that I used WhatsApp because that could have got very dangerous very quickly. I was, just, I was <laughs> curious as to how you actually uh, broke it to your good lady. Yeah, it was WhatsApp. It was, I, uh, I'm at the auction. Yes, okay. Have you got another painting? No. Why are you messaging me? Well, I might have just won something in the auction. Oh, what might you just have won? A well, pair of assholes you know for 48 that- hours. <laughs> You know that time when Matt and Darren auction a uh, visit, in inverted commas, to your house? Yes. That. And then it All took about quiet. five or ten minutes to get a message back that went, ah, okay. And that was it. <laughs> so so you successfully did all that outside of slapping distance. Yeah. Um, okay. and, uh, and, and, and i got to say, we've had a, uh, we've had a fabulous uh, night or so. Uh, here in sunny Sheffield, uh, we'll obviously talk a little more about that later on in the show. Um, I guess, I guess at this point, and we will find more about more out about you, Rich, uh, okay. as we continue through the show as well. But I guess we should start with getting into our normal rhythm of uh, of, of the of the show format, and this is all about, I guess, what we've been doing since we since we last recorded. And um, do you know what? It's nice to say, it's not been a while, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. If I if I get my editing skills on the go, we could have two out in one month. My God, that's that's unheard of, absolutely unheard of. And I guess for the benefit of listeners as well, and I, I don't, I'm, I'm relaxed if Matt keeps all this in. We've got a gorgeous little pussycat uh, in the room as well um, for you people. Um, so you might hear it the odd meow, which is absolutely fine. Um, makes a change to uh, ice cream van and uh, another half shouting in the background. So. Um, yeah, what have we been up to, Matthew? And and Richard, of course, will come to you shortly. Uh, well, I was going to ask you something, actually. Do you remember a while ago, I, I posted a picture on Twitter of me doing an edit on a train in first class. And I think Dougie said it was the most Tory thing you'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
since we've moved house and I've, I've sort of moved to a, a, a nicer area than I was in, I was wondering if you guys could sort of search back into your minds and, and see if you can think about the most Tory door-to-door -door salesman you've ever had. Because I've, I've moved up a level, it would seem. Okay. Um, for me, the most Tory door-to-door -door salesman um, probably will have been a Conservative candidate in a local election. Um <laughs> Uh, there was there was nothing nothing really. I I, I have a ha uh, I have a policy of trying to engage with these people as little as possible. I'll give them the quick once over and go. Are you worth voting for? Hmm, maybe on the face of it, possibly. Give me a little bit of literature, which has potentially been badly written, poor grammar. I always like to interrogate their uh, their their pamphlets that they give us because normally you, it's been written by some underling. Who, uh, who hasn't got a full grasp of the English language. Pretty much like a local Chinese restaurant menu. Uh, so there might be a potential a bit of English in there somewhere. But uh, no, that's probably the most Tory door-to-door -door salesman I've ever had. Well, this one, this one, <clears throat> I realise I've, I've moved up in the world, obviously. Oh, yes. Because there's a dude at the door and he's holding a picture frame and an aerial picture of the house that I'm living in. And he goes, all right, I guess we, we've been taking these with an aeroplane. And I thought, no, you haven't. <laughs> Either somebody else has, or that's a drone. Either way, I'm pretty sure you probably shouldn't be doing that to, yeah. to random people's houses. And he was holding the picture in front of the frame to sort of show, well, this is what it could look like. You could have it up on your wall. Mm. I said, dude, it's, it's, it's not my house. I've got a question with that, though. How, how, do, you know what, yeah, how do you know it was your house? Was it, a, was it extreme close-up? Yeah, case, it was close enough. That was going to be more like somebody doing a parachute halo drop over your house with a, with a GoPro on their face. <laughs> you, were, you were laid in the garden with your legs spread and uh, all kinds of um, suntan lotion and tinctures being spread over you by three virgins. <laughs> he, he wasn't that close. <laughs> 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 he was close enough to look at it and say, all right, well, that's this house. Um, I said, well, no, it's not, it's not mine. I only rent this, so I don't, I don't really want it. Is you sure it'll be a nice little of mine? I went, dude, it's not even my car on the driveway. I don't know when this was taken, but it's got <laughs> nothing to do with me. Jog on. That's been taken from Google Maps about five years ago and zoomed in. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But it is, it is a bit better than someone coming around going, do you want to buy a dog? Oh, do, you, do you want your, uh, do you want, do you want your, uh, you want your cladding done? Yeah. <laughs> do, do you want your drive doing? Uh, yes, you do want your drive doing, because if you say no, I know where you live. Yeah, We used to get a crap version of the painting ones that would come round and claim to be from a local college, and then have some paintings in a portfolio and, and try and sell them to us. Paintings of just art stuff? Yeah, just whatever things. They it's weren't even... It's a living, isn't it? Yeah, but they were quite obviously prints of something, because... Ten minutes later, because they'd not coordinated themselves properly, yeah. somebody else came round with the same set of pictures, yeah. asking you if you wanted to buy a picture from them, uh, and just <sighs> what words fail me? They were Polish <laughs> or something like that. It's at that point it seemed to be the new. Um, do you want to buy a bag of pegs? Ar <laughs> arrangement. Did they call you Dave when you opened the door? They didn't use the name. There was just hello, sir. Uh, sorry to bother you. That sounded Chinese. Sorry. Uh, Would you say hero? Hero? No. Mm, casual races are at its finest on the Midlife Gamer podcast. No. Other races will be dealt with at a later point. <laughs> so, Rich, I, one thing I love about being in someone else's house, particularly when they're uh, they're an out and out nerd like your good self, I hope you don't mind me saying that. Oh, you can say that, yeah. Excellent. Is the level of nerdness around your your home is incredible. I think I think the favourite thing that I've spotted from here, and I think we could. I think the game should potentially be, is it more or less nerdy than the USS Enterprise technical design document? I think I, from where you're sat, I think I know what you might be about to bring <laughs> up. Is it, is, it, is it any of the three technical manuals for tanks, or is it the Marvel Vehicles Owner's Workshop Manual? <laughs> uh, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, oh, but hang on. I've got one that's not up there, which is actually the Hayes Manual for Surviving the Zombie Apocalypse, which instructs you how to build your own bunker. Does it? Yeah, mm. that's that's in there with a the TV guff. Okay, okay. So you got your uh, you got your bug out bag at the ready. Should it all kick off? Yeah. Okay. Are they are these zombies going to stop off at the uh, one of two local Taco Bells on the way to uh, to? Yeah. Eat? Oh yeah, they might actually. Yeah, yeah, they'll dip into the one that's next to the Dunkin' Donuts and the KFC. I've, I've, ne probably. I've never seen a Taco Bell anywhere in the UK. I don't know if it's because of like geography and where I live. But I, I, I was quite impressed when I uh, when I arrived on Friday night and told you about the Taco Bell. And you went, oh, there's two. I thought, what? <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. 
Speaking of nerdiness, um, something else I want to talk about. This is like through the keyhole, isn't it? You know, when you go into somebody's house. Now, I've not been rifling through anybody's knicker drawer, okay? Olivia, you're safe. I've not done anything like that. Um, <laughs> But I couldn't help but notice um, there is a lot of, uh, I guess, minion-related uh, uh, yeah. merchandise, etc. Is that is that and also SpongeBob? Um, talk to me about that. Yeah, that sounds suggests it sounds like I've got this fetish with the colour yellow, really, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, no, all, I, I, all things that children like. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with a good a good cartoon. So I I put minions and SpongeBob. In the same bracket as Family Guy and uh, Rick and Morty for me. I watch a good cartoon. Okay. And of their time, they were very good and they had adult jokes in them. Yes. And you see a lot of that stuff in there. And uh, the minions just fuck about, don't they, and have a good time. They do, don't they? Yeah, they, don't, they, don't, they, do. they don't really give a shit. <laughs> I mean, and, and they get stuff wrong on a level that I can get it wrong on. Mm. Well, I've been uh, so they're, they're from the Despicable Me and, franchise and their own, and and, their own and, and starring their own. movie. Uh, like so I, I think I've seen the first Despicable Me, and then I didn't watch any more after I was likened to Gru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The... Can you see? Can you see the resemblance? Is another fiver? No. Oh, not really. good lad. <laughs> okay, well done. <laughs> Listeners, draw your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, what else has happened? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not a fat lot in my world. Okay. Just, I think all the DIY. So I'm doing a lot of flat pack stuff. Yeah. Um, and then on a sort of a bi weekly basis, I have a, a, a handyman to come around to secure all of my flat pack stuff and make it make it possible to actually put things on there. Okay, so does he fix what you've not done right? Mm, mm. Excellent. But he's, 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 he's not, he, doesn't, he doesn't mock me. No? Well, no. He won't. He's, 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 he's getting money off you, isn't he? He is. Yeah. And he's great because we're about to throw things away all the time. He goes, oh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, I love that. I love that. <laughs> Do you want this? Do you want this? Take it. You know what could be worse is if he came round your house and looked, went over all the stuff that you'd built and just did a bit of Reiki on it. <laughs> there we go. There's a cherry on top. I'm just waving my hands. <laughs> Waving my hands, I've got my little symbols. My little symbols on my thumb and first fingers. Ding, 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 ding. I don't know how it works. There is a, there is a singing bowl. Oh. A singing bowl. Is there a singing bowl song? I... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, is, that, is that level three, Ray? That must be level three. Okay, well, I look forward to, uh, to maybe having an update on that at a later point. All right. Yeah. Good, good, good. Do you want to come around and speak to her yourself? I'm sure. I'm sure she'll love nothing more than. Sit I down. would. I, I would love nothing more than for me to have Reiki performed on me. And we'll. Oh, do you know what? We'll even we'll even record that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. That's that's my pledge to you, Matthew, and, and the listeners. Okay. Next time I'm down in the in Matthew's world, uh, we'll make that happen. Okay, Rich. Anything uh, anything of interest that you've been uh, you've been up to lately? Um. I've, does getting a new job count? Yeah, absolutely. That's a big yeah. change. Yeah, that's uh, you know because you've um, well, I'll let I'll let you speak. You know, it's it's been a, it's been a bit of an up and down time of late, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. So I got made redundant fifteen months ago. Yeah. Uh, long story short, took a training course in IT and then finally got a job. Yeah, it's start of April. Yeah. That that's what went on. Um, really loving that. Um, my other half's been ill. This sounds like I'm going. It's like. An episode of what's his face, Simon Bates' is our tune. Yeah, I, we've got that somewhere, haven't we? We use it on one of the early shows. Fucking hell. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's recovering from that. Um, but I'm alright, because I still got gaming and I've got Midlife Gamer podcast and stuff, and we've got the MLGX going on. No, MLG meeting in September. There's EGX, so that'll, that all keeps going. And for want of sounding like a. Uh, an episode of Trisha or something. Um, there's been a lot of people in the community that I've really been able to use as uh, to help, to help me get through. Because I I'll be perfectly honest, I have had some quite dark moments, for want of a better phrase. Yeah. But then you know the podcasting, listening to that, the gaming, and just generally people on the Facebook group, Twitter, that kind of thing. Um, it's been really good. And if there's any, but actually, it goes. Could you do a kind of a shout out for 
the whole the whole way that the community supports everybody it's really good and i found that that to be an absolutely priceless thing for me sometimes awesome mate me goes really, to show, goes to show that it's 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 very rare that you go through something that's just unique to you a lot of people have been through similar situations in the past and there's there's always people out there particularly in our community who are more than happy to to pick up the phone and just go look Give me a what's your number? What's your number? We need we need to we need to verbally hug this out. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't want to single out individuals because there's a lot of there's a lot of people that do that. It's not don't I don't think you need to worry about the capacity that the community has to support people. There will always be somebody who wants to stick their hand up and go, you know what? I'm only at the end of a telephone. Yeah, yeah. I definitely get. I've always had a sense of leave no man behind. Uh, ethos and approach with, that's built over years within the community, and you know, and and your you know your retelling of of, of your recent experiences just epitomises what midlife gamer is and 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 is all about. Hopefully, it will always be. Well, yes, regardless of the frequency of us recording. Okay, but it sounds like we need to record more shows. Just for rich, <laughs> just to keep you entertained. So we'll, we'll we'll try and address that at some point in the future. So no, thank you for sharing that, Rich. That's really uh, you know it's not an easy thing to talk about, and I, I know that from personal experience. So appreciate you sharing that very very much. As for me, I've been on holiday. Now I'm not one. I, I, I am absolutely. I'm I'm adamant. I'm not one of these people that sort of plasters my activities all over social media oh no you don't really yeah <laughs> yeah oh, okay I, I posted a picture of my breakfast this morning all right but if it's an activity that involves me leaving my home for an extended length of time uh why would i advertise the fact that my home is empty mm. to the world for the sake of getting a few likes of my hairy ass back getting burns on a beach no but I've been away, and now I'm back, and I can talk about it. So, um, had a couple of weeks, uh, went back over to the Dominican Republic, which is one of my uh, one of my favourite parts of the world. But I had the pleasure of taking my good lady over for the for the first time. I really, really wanted her to to, to experience something. And you, you guys will be able to relate to this. If, if there's something that you're really passionate about, something you know deep, deep down that they'll really enjoy as oh, well, like the Sopranos, like the Sopranos, and uh, to to a lesser degree board games uh, good lady she doesn't do board games I'm, tr I'm still trying I'm still trying we managed to play we managed to play Yahtzee while we were away but she did insist that I, she said why don't you just bring a pack of cards I said what what and not just a normal pack of cards yeah uh, okay so we played a bit of gin rummy <laughs> do you hang on a minute, do you sleeve regular playing cards no <laughs> no 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 you pick them up for ten a penny can't you yeah, you can wreck those bad boys all you want. I'll just grab another pack. There's no rares in a normal pack of cards. They need, <laughs> no, they need no. covering off. No, no, get a no, yeah. no, yeah. no you don't, yeah, yeah, you don't get a legendary king of hearts. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I guess I've got a couple of a couple of little stories to relate uh, from the uh, from from the holiday. Um, so it was all inclusive, and um, which meant, uh, you know, for people that know. You're basically you're not paying for anything. All there's food and drink on constantly, whenever you want it, whatever you want. Uh, so as far as breakfast is concerned, it's all laid out buffet style, and there's always a, a guy. There's a guy behind a massive hot plate. Now this is the guy you go to. He fries your eggs, and he makes your omelets. Yeah, so that that that's your go-to guy. So uh, for a couple of days, I just went for the egg, and one day I had an omelette, and that all very, very nice. And then I then I went all British and thought, I'm going to blow his mind a little bit. So I rocks up with my plate, and I hands him a slice of bread, and he looks at me, gone. He, he's got no idea. His command of the English language isn't the best. So I'm trying to sort of work out the internationally understood sign language for... Can you fry this bread for me, please? <laughs> okay, because I'm British and I'm a bit of a bunter, and I want fried bread on my breakfast. All right, because I'm missing it. So he, uh, yeah, so he, he fried bread for me, but he fried it terribly. 
I was trying. I, I was kept trying to in, encourage him. Throw more oil on. Put more oil on the bread. Blah blah blah. But no. So I get. I get a dry piece of bread that's been uh, heated on a hot plate. It's not the best, but it was a little bit fried. But then, then I discovered where they put the bacon. So they put them out in these big, big dishes under hot plates and under the hot lights, keep everything nice and warm. I know where it's going. But what they do is when they put the bacon out. They'll put slices of bread underneath it, which absorbs all the fat and the grease. So, British boy thinking on, they're already pre-greased. So they'll bring the bacon out, and I'll fish the bread out from underneath. It's absolutely caked in grease. And now, right now, sunshine, fry that motherfucker. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. So, uh, so yeah, introducing uh, in, introducing a new concept to the uh, to the Dominican Republic, and then I'm sure they'll all the fried bread will be everywhere in no time at all. With the, with the fellow Brits in the, in, the, in, the, in the resort looking at you going, that's a game changer. Well, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that some people noticed and said, you know what, he's British, isn't he? Because you'd never, you'd never get an American wanting to fry bread. No, they, they've got bigger fish to fry, or burgers, because they were serving burgers for breakfast. I didn't, I didn't, don't worry, I didn't. Didn't didn't go down that uh, dark path, but it was yeah, it was a good spread of um, of Brits, uh, Americans, some Canadians. Um, there was a bit of an influx of uh, the bit of a French invasion. Um, don't hear that very often, do you? No. Um, <laughs> uh, on, on, on the second week, um, oh, they like to talk. Oh, they talk. They talk for England, or they talk for France as well. In French. In French. Uh, so I don't know what's better. He's Having people around you just jibber jabbering on in French and not really understanding what's going on, or having sort of crazy cockneys. There was this there was this one cockney family, and the old guy he had a proper cockney swagger. He was there. He was like you know doing the Lambeth walk everywhere. He was he was a joy to behold. But you always you always be interesting and and curious characters while you're away. But um, so the other thing I wanted to talk about. And I kind of did this, you remember, I did this when I went to Turkey. So normally what I like to do within the first couple of days of arriving is I'll go and have a massage and I'll have an exfoliating massage. Because what I want to do is I want to clear all the dead skin off my body and allow it to take on all the sun with the new skin. And it, it ensures you a long lasting tan. You aware of that? Go figure. Go figure. Matt, Matt's just looking at me going... Pasty, pasty got, white I've boy. Got, I've got no idea what he's I talking about. What I don't know what a tan okay. is. So I booked in for uh, so we, the lady and I booked in for the uh, for the massage and we turn up and we sign the disclaimer forms and everything, um, and then we're we're separated off into the separate changing rooms and we we both got our own masseuse, okay, that are taking care of us because it's kind of a couple's thing, or well, that's what we're led to believe. So the uh, the lady leaves me in. She hands me a, a a black silky kimono and a pair of flip flops and she says. Take all your clothes off, put this on, and then come and find me. Oh, I'll be just outside. And I said, what, you want to take all my clothes off? She goes, yes, 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 all clothes off. I said, well, have I paid for something that I don't understand what I'm getting? <laughs> <laughs> and I was conflicted. Of course, I was going, is this happening to the lady as well? Are we going to be separated into separate rooms? Is there going to be a happy ending? I, I, I honestly didn't know. But thankfully... Uh, I was led into the same room as my good lady, and then they handed us these um, th th this small black uh, kind of crumpled mass in into our hands, and said, "Please put those on." And they went and stepped outside. And they're like these, you, you know the um, you know the mesh gusset you get in a in, in a set of swimming uh, 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 swimming shorts, the sort of stuff that holds holds the junk together and doesn't pop out. Alan Partridge style when you mm -hmm. when you when you're stretching, so we're there struggling to try and put these uh, black fungi type um, pieces of garment on. I was struggling, and and they were. We did put them over your head. How can you how can you fail to put on some netted? Because they were they were just well, there was no indication of which was the right side. So I had to hold them up and look well, which is the wider, you know, the, which is the larger <laughs> one. That's going to be the arse end. And then I'm struggling to get my get my foot in. My toe keeps catching on the uh, on on the bloody stuff. So anyway, she had to end up putting them on for me, the good lady. And then I'm stood there, and I look like fucking Mick McManus from like 1970s World of Sport Wrestling. So I've got this big guy, the big guy, and these black thongy type bloody trunks on. It was, wasn't a pretty sight, my was friend. That, I think it could have been a good look, that. It well, 
maybe maybe in your mind and world um i'm not willing to test that theory i will never sport such uh, such garments for the for the public should we suggest rich that dan will make a good bear like a huge bear a bear a bear what a bear not 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 a nude no no an animal i know I what you mean i know where you're going with this matthew that that's a gay term, isn't it? <laughs> That's a gay term. You're talking about bummers. And bummers like bears, or some bummers do. And some like cubs. Yeah, and uh, stoats, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I'm not a stoat. I'm definitely in bear territory. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a bear. I'll be, I'll, I'm a bear to a very special person. I don't want to be anybody else's bear. Bless you. No matter how much you want to tickle my... Ring piece. So when you're away, do you do uh, do you do beach activities? Do you like the beach? Yeah, I lived I lived on the beach the entire two weeks because it was it was right at the front of the hotel. Uh, did, did the hotel have their own cocktail, which is always free? Uh, all the all the cocktails were free. That yes, was, that was in yes, the all inclusive. I was battered, so I drank too much and I ate too much. I put a stone on while I was away. Uh, thankfully, because of science and retention, I've managed to drop about six pounds in the four, four or five days since I've been back. Um, but I'm not, I'm not happy with my, uh, my current weight level. Uh, so I'm, I'm endeavouring to get that down a little further. So, um, so are you still walking to McDonald's to get your, <laughs> your three patty <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> you cheeky bastard. No, I'm, I'm actually, contrary to what we've eaten over the last 24 hours, I, I'm, I'm actually adopting a, quite a strict regime of... Um, of, uh, of greens and veg and fruit and a little bit of protein, um, but cutting all fat out, cutting all bread out uh, wherever possible. Um, but hey, this isn't about um, Darren's oh, no. journey through struggling with weight and and whatever and uh, sucking his own dick over the holidays we've <laughs> been on. Let's uh, let, let, let's move on a little bit um, from a. I guess we always talk a little about movie and TV. Uh, obviously, an important thing has happened. Um, which was the end of Game of Thrones. Uh, we're not going to discuss spoilers or anything. I know you, Rich, you have zero interest because you've not watched any of it. I've got interest in seeing people cry about how bad they thought it was. Yeah, that... it's been a, been a lot of that. Been, been a lot of wow. Listen, like, when I go through my free, Twitter feed, Twitter feed after the final episode, all I saw was wow, <laughs> and then I scrolled down and there was wow. The, the smuggest people I've seen are the people who never watched it and went. For years you've been telling me to watch this, and now you don't even like it. I win. Yes, I win the internet this today. Um, okay, so I'll just say just briefly, I, I, because of timing, I had to wait until I got back to the UK before nailing the last three episodes, which across the space of the day and taking breaks in between, so I jet lag. It took me about eight or nine hours to get to the to the very end, and I don't know if it was because I was just knackered or my brain was still halfway across the world. But I was kind of indifferent. I thought, oh, okay. But I've had time to sit back and reflect and ponder what I've seen. And I thought, okay, given what they've, given what they had material-wise for the last few seasons, which obviously went from the early part of the early part of this the series, which was all of George R. R. Martin's books. Yeah, and, and they then, ran out. And then obviously they caught up with the books and then George R. R. Martin just gave them a bullet synopsis. Point. Bullet points from now yeah, on, gents. Bullet, yeah, it was a one-pager on a PowerPoint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was sat, sat in a script this meeting. Happens, this, 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 happens, this and this. this happens. Slide two. Um, and <laughs> you, you can tell, if you went back and watched the uh, watched the show from the very beginning, you can tell the point where they run out of book and they start making or you know trying to flesh out their own stuff based on a few bullet points. Um, thoughts, Matthew? Where, where do you come from with this? Oh, I'm glad it's over because I, I, it was just getting a little bit too much. Mm. Just, everything just seemed to be Game of Thrones. Uh, I don't know. It was all right. It's I guess if you want, if you want to say it's more of the journey than the destination, then it was it was good. Um, I'm not going to be signing a petition demanding that they do their job <laughs> differently because that's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, I, I did think that it was it was a, a poorer series than some of the others, mm. but uh, but hey, it, it's all wrapped up. And yeah. uh, if you want more, there's what a prequel. They are doing a couple, couple of prequels in, on the horizon, yeah. And Martin, once he's finished dicking around with From Software and developing some open world gorgeous game, which I'm quite jazzed for. Um, yeah, there's there's plenty of stuff out there. I'm I'm still listening to the audio books. I'm only halfway through book three, so I'm I'm still getting me Game of Thrones on, mate. I'm having it. They have said that there isn't going to be an Arya spin-off series though, because some people wanted that apparently. 
No. Well, we've got Dora the Explorer, so we don't need an Aria the Explorer. I don't. Um, I mean, I know what... Th- th- this tells you how much I know about it. I probably know more about Dora the Explorer than I do about the Game of Thrones characters. Why does that not surprise me? It's a cartoon. <laughs> do you know that the lady who played uh, Cersei was getting paid a million dollars an episode to stand in front of a green screen drinking wine and looking sad? It's a living, isn't it? I could do that. Yeah. Maybe not in that course. Yeah. Would you bring your own wine? Or would you just let them pump you with their whatever it is? Because that, oh. that could be just call it. That could be Ribena. That's Ribena. Is that Ribena? Yeah, that's Ribena or Vimto. Though. They'll be able to see, but I'll be like, ooh, I could feel it. <laughs> I'll tell you, everybody, I, 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 one thing that I did notice is the one of the things that I really liked from uh, the Game of Thrones is the uh, the... Remember, the people in the wardrobe, the people who dress the characters, mm. because who is the uh, the other Stark lady? Who's, Sansa. Sansa looks incredible in some of her armour. Some of the armour yeah. she was wearing as Queen of the North was absolutely yeah. sublime. Yeah. That, that's up your strata, isn't mm. it, Mitch? I mean, we could get really nerdy about this, because I've been, obviously I, I, I absorb content post, uh, post-viewing post just to get affirmation or different perspectives on, on people's thoughts. But there was a whole video about how... Um, how Sansa's entire costume at the at the end of the show was a homage to all of the Stark family. So there was part of the part of the costume which uh, was homage to her mother, uh, another part to her father, and uh, yada yada yada. But it's only after upon after viewing that you makes you think, no, they've actually worked really fucking hard on not just giving you a, a, a blockbuster style because the the effects on the on the, the final season. You don't see that on North standard television, and we've kind of become desensitised to it. And it's our we built up our expe- expectations. You go and watch some feature films in in cinemas, and the effects won't have been as good, and the action sequences and the cinematography. Um, you know, there's a lot. I think there's a lot to be there's a lot of kudos to be given to the people behind the scenes who who don't normally get the love in yeah. the game throw. That's all I have to say on the matter. I've seen the obviously the pictures and stuff from it, and yeah. like you were saying that that's. The armor stuff is that that's really good because you get the, uh, I mean I think what you refer to with the blockbuster thing is you'll get female characters who are supposed to be wearing armor in inverted commas and it consists of a chainmail bikini, <laughs> which <laughs> which whilst looking quite good for certain members of the public is, is not going to deflect very much. Mm. I, th- I think I think as a society we've moved away from from that type of uh, you know female warriors. You know, think back to um, Gosh, was the was the Red, Red Sonia, the warrior princess, uh, Red Sonia. You know th- those that that era where it was just right. Okay, well you're going to be you're going to be stopping blades and bludgeons with a uh, with nipple a, clips. Yeah, with nipple clips. Basically, <laughs> couldn't have put it better myself. So, um, but yes, Game of Thrones. I'm all right. I'm relaxed. Excellent, excellent. I still haven't changed my mind about Endgame. It's still all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, are you are you the guy off that meme that says I thought Endgame was all right? Change my mind. No. <laughs> <laughs> anything oh, uh, in particular get, for you, Rich? Viewing. I'm going to be I'm going to be really dull and say I don't have any of the MCU either as part of that. So mm. I'm one of those people that hasn't joined the hype train for that. But you're you're, um, you're a Marvel fan. Blatantly. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not, you've not watched any of the films. I do. I've, I've seen, I've, I know, I've seen, yeah, I've seen some of the early ones. So I've seen all, I've seen all the Iron Man. I've seen Captain America: Winter Soldier. Uh, I'm trying to think, I've seen it's Avengers Assemble and Age of Ultron. Uh, I think that's about as far as it goes. If yeah, I have seen about, the others, you're about in the same place as me, mate. I'm just taking I've got, the time over. And got, and got the and got the others that go. Uh, yeah, I don't. And the other thing about cinema is, and I'm going to sound bit of a killjoy here. If I go to the cinema, I don't want some kid kicking the back of my seat while I'm watching a film. <laughs> um, See it at the which back. Is, which is generally why it does. <laughs> so, f- for me, for me, what if I went to the cinema, I would, I'd have to buy multiple tickets, so I'd buy my seat, and then I'd buy the one in front of me, the one behind me, and the two <laughs> either side, and just go, if somebody sat there, go, no, that's taken. Just so that I'd got a little zone of my own to sit and watch the film in. But that's why it'd get so expensive, and I don't mm. have... Enough money to go and see all the films that I want to go and see. Hmm. I do see a lot of stuff on Netflix and so on, though. One thing that I put it on the our film and TV page as well, which if people haven't watched it, it's really good. Um, it's a kind of like a 28 Days Yet Later sort of film. It's called uh, The Girl with All the Gifts. Okay. Um, and what you've got is 
you don't find this out, but you, it starts off. I'm trying not to do too many spoilers, but it starts off in a military base, and they appears they appear to be teaching a group this group of children. Um, in quite a brutal regime sort of a way for that for that kind of thing. Yeah. But various bits and pieces kick off, and uh, they have to go on the run, and that's when it gets a bit twenty eight days later, because you find out when. Uh, um, it's very. I suppose you you might look at it, watch it, and think actually what I'm doing is watching somebody make a film of The Last of Us. Yeah. Because that in it actually has no spoilers here. The same virus in it, the Cordyceps virus, is actually a proper virus, um, and it's used as the basis for this. So okay. they go off, and that virus has infected people to the point that they become those walking things you see in there there and as it gets worse they do mutate and you can see where they got the ideas from for the click for the clickers from when you say that that virus is real do you mean real real yeah why 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 isn't that burnt with fire now Uh, i don't don't know if you you can look it up because they use the the only the only indication you get that it's the same thing is that they use the latin name for it i think in the film so it's something something cordyceps whatever but when they describe it in the film, you can see where it's coming from because it's a fungal thing that attacks the brain. When if I remember playing The Last of Us, that's that's that's, right. that's that's how it that's how it gets them. But it is a really good film. Um, I've written it down. The girl uh, with all the gifts. You give not it, the ghoul, the girl. The girl. Oh, I thought you said ghoul. <laughs> Coffee now. That's a different story altogether. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a few adult movies. Yeah. In that kind of vein, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Excellent my, stuff. Well, yeah, because my stuff is more is more horror films. Yeah. Um, than that. Do you, than do that you, do you rate new horror films? Are new horror films good? Some, yeah, some of them are really good. If you want to see, if you haven't seen it, see Get Out by Jordan Peele. That was the one that got uh, nominated for a screenplay Oscar. Yeah. Um, and these aren't. Some people think horror. You say horror film to someone, and they go, "Oh, look, there's somebody who's going to get their arms their arms whacked off, and they're." pitchfork shoved in the face they're not all like that i can't do those sort of films yeah i can't they, 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 they do they do go all, all across the spectrum so they cater for people who do want to see that but get out is it's more a psychological thing mm. you don't know what's going on with it and if you've got the blu-ray there's two endings to it as well which you can't talk about because they'll no. spoil it mm-hmm. in, in that respect and um, there's another good one called it follows which is the same sort of thing that's a uh, more of a a go. It's kind of like it in that there's a there's a ghost and spirit involved that seems to be haunting some children, but it's rather than just wandering around scaring the shit out of them, it actually goes after them. Mm. Um, is, the, is the new it's any good? Yeah, it's good. Is yeah. it? I, yeah. I, I need to give it a go. Yeah, mm. but the the original they they were working off of off a very good platform in the first place because the original one with Tim Curry and is still is still worth a watch. Well, that that opening I watched the first ten minutes. I think the opening the opening shots of the USS Georgia going down the uh, uh, the, the main field streets was almost shot for shot mm. from that, uh, that yeah. TV series the mini series. I mean, when it comes to horror films, I mean, I think I mean, Jacob's Ladder is I don't is that a horror film or is that a psychological thriller? That's I I, I class I put that in the psychological thriller department but that's that's a really good brain i love a good brain melter you know when i'm not saying anymore because i don't want to spoil anything but when you start watching something and it and it kind of it 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 change it morphs into something bigger i think that's my best yeah, way of yeah. being vague without spoiling anything uh jacob's right a, a terrific film i actually cried at the end i think it's it's that it's that powerful a story if you want some brain melty films, check out some of the things that David Cronenberg's made. Those will do. Those will do. That guy's a lunatic. Those will do. Those that, films will do that, your boxing. That, that some of his early, lunatic, some of his right, early ones. Yeah, crazy. Uh, you, 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 um, are you a fan of Dario Argento? Yeah, yeah. Lucio Fulci. Yeah. Dario Argento. Yeah. Um, they're two Italian directors yeah. who yeah. do the uh, old school horror films, yeah. and they are more, much more psychological ones. Which along, to, oh God, I'm starting to go on a rant now. Uh, something else that's quite good that you that you could see on, I think it's on Netflix. It's called Velvet Buzzsaw, which is kind of a cross between a sort of a are these people seeing this and dreaming it, or are, is it actually happening? Type thing set in the art world. So there's lots of weird painting-y sort of stuff going on. But that's a, that's another one that's uh, that I would recommend people see if they're not into 
really sort of hardcore okay. splatter. Mm. Well, while we're on that vibe, uh, more, one shout out recommendation, recommendation from me is a series called Russian Doll. Uh, it's on, I can't remember if it was on Netflix. Yes, it's a Netflix. It's a Netflix, Netflix original. Uh, think of um, Groundhog Day, but a bit more fucked up and a bit more adult. And you pretty much nailed it. Well, it was a great show. Yeah, I, na- I nailed it in, as, as you do with many Netflix shows, you nail it in one go and you come away just thinking, yeah, that was, that was a great show. So there you go, Russian Doll. My Excellent. recommendation. And finally, The Punisher, definitely. Uh, yeah, everyone should watch that if you like Marvel. Yeah. Oh, and finally, so, so, yeah, I do. <laughs> so, so in answer to your original question from some time ago, yeah, kind of Marvel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I just forgot yeah. that The Punisher was there yeah. just shooting people a bit. And finally, finally, I am now Game of Thrones out of the way. I'm looking for something else to get my teeth into. So, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to I'm gonna start watching that. So, I should have. Uh, some thoughts and uh, and opinions on that on the next show. And don't forget Rick and Morty coming out in the autumn. Yeah. Again. Not, yeah. No, not again. New. And don't and don't forget another Star Wars film. And don't forget the Captain Picard show. And don't forget. Black Mirror's back. Black Mirror's back. And don't forget uh, New Westworld season three trailers. Ah. Job. Don't burn. Ah. Is Alan Paul in that? Eh? Is Alan Paul in yes, that? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, so uh, Breaking Bad, Need for Speed, and then Westworld. 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 Don't don't diss the Westworld, mate. All right. It's <laughs> it's cerebral. Okay, but you need to stick with it. But Westworld was definitely one of those shows where, as soon as I watch an episode, I'd have to go onto YouTube and find one of these Westworld episode what you've just watched explained. I definitely wanted to go just just to check my un- understanding and interpretation is aligned with what was what was intended. So. Well, if, well, if you like that sort of stuff, I know that, I don't know if I've spoken about them before, but there's a podcast called Bold Move. Uh, I think it's B-A-L-D, Move. Oh, Bold Move. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they do uh, podcasts uh, of so many shows, including, obviously, I've been finishing listening to them talk about Game of Thrones, uh, and they do it for movies, and I think Chernobyl, and a bunch of things. Mm. And I think they actually quit their jobs, and they've been doing it full-time now for a couple of years, and it's real good, real good content if you want if you want those sort of immediate reactions of people who, who kind of know what they're talking about. Okay. It's worth a shot. So, not like us. Oh, God, no. No, no one comes Because <laughs> they know what they're talking about. Factual information. <laughs> no. Excellent stuff. So, uh, if we follow the uh, if we follow the itinerary of, uh, of our normal show, how it works, I think we're straying into what we've been playing territory. Uh, and we always go digital first. So I'm very keen to get an update from Matthew initially on uh, how are all things Persona 5? Persona 5 things are still fantastic. I've just ticked over the 200 hour mark. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take off a day for times where I've left it paused. Yeah. Uh, I thought I was sort of uh, barreling to an ending. I've, I've, I've defeated what I believe and what well, I believe and still believe to be the big bad. However, the big bad is is was willing to be and mostly unopposed to being the new prime minister of Japan. So he's got a huge team around, and even yeah, though yeah. He, even though his heart has been has been cleansed and he's admitted all of his crimes live on air, he's still got a team of people trying to spin that. Yeah. So I'm still going to school, doing my exams, hanging out with my friends, working in the burger joint to get some money and just increase some of my stats. Oh. And I, I've read that there is a new game plus. I don't know how that's going to work into it. But again, it's I, I don't want it to end. And we were talking yesterday and you said it's great when you have a game which you don't want to end and you don't have to rush. But there is, although there's no urgency right now, time is still going on. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure at some point there will be a hard end yeah. at a date. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. But it, it, I'm, still, I'm still loving everything about it and uh, the... Uh, the music I'm still listening to constantly in the car. Uh, I found some really good ska versions. Oh, right. Okay. With, with lots of horn and saxophone that I yeah. wouldn't have thought would work, but do. Yeah. Um, and I'll, I'll just continue to, I'll continue to, I've been looking at, I've been looking at merchandise. So I want to get a few t-shirts that, yeah. that um, one of the characters always says, uh, for real? So I need to get, I need to get a for real T-shirt. Yeah, uh, I need to finish it off, and I need to catch up with with um, with, with Steve Adica, who we'll we'll probably mention later, courtesy of Rich's uh, podcasting at the moment. He's he's played that numerous times as well. So sure. me and him need to need to get together. So, yeah, so you need to have a good uh, a good nerd off. Yeah, I do. 
Uh, I've not touched anything else on the PlayStation. Oh, I did clean my PlayStation. So you did. So you did talk us through that. How did it go? Uh, well, it, it didn't really... It, it cleaned it. It's not really made much difference to the, to the aircraft carrier sounds it makes, but I think I may have been a bit late on the clean. But I was determined to do it, and I, I think I picked up a kit for about Fiverr on eBay with some special tools, some special screws. Yeah. Watched a YouTube video, and yeah, stripped it down as, as, as much as you're going to. Got the PSU off, got the fan off, got the, got the hard drive out. Uh, and it was, I was glad that I did it myself, just to sort of, I mean, I built that PC recently, mm. so it was nice to appreciate what the insides of things look like. I'm like, oh, guess what? It is just a typical SSD inside, so no wonder people upgrade their PlayStations really yeah. easily. I should have done it a long time ago, because I've still only got half a gig in there. Yeah. But with, with new technology on the horizon, I think I'll probably hold off. Yeah. Mm. But no, it, it was good to do that. Uh, compressed air is my new favourite thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, have, you tried it, have you tried it on your balls? I, I ain't brave enough. Someone said if you turn it upside down, squirt it, phone comes out. Uh, okay. Are we talking about? Are we talking? Are we still talking about compressed air? I think we are. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. Richard's, Richard's got. So do I try it upside down? No. No, it's a little, little bit of moisture. Or is that lube? <clears throat> I can never tell. Fantastic radio, boys and girls. Yes, thanks for great. <laughs> That's radio. a live test. <laughs> yeah. um, I've still been um, dicking around on the PC. Uh, I've not mentioned it before, but I, I grabbed, uh, I think actually, to be fair, I think both of these were gifted to me, um, Civilization Five and Six. Sure. So I jumped straight into Six, as that's the latest version now. Quick recap. I um, I think I played the very first one, but I, I, spent, I spent a good year or so playing Civilization Three. Uh, so a lot has changed over the 10 or so years since then. Uh, it's gone, well, it's it, it's, a, it's a much better game for us, I yeah. think. But a lot of my, I, I keep trying to go very quick military victory, which is what I used to do. And it you can't do that. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not as feasible as it used to be. Uh, but it's it's a real, it's, a, it's, it's still one of those games where you can just sit back and just just let time disappear over hours. And one thing that it took me a little bit of time to find out is you can, I remember you could toggle off the animation for units moved. Because when you reach some of those end, uh, sort of the, the later times in that game and you hit right next turn, it's gonna go through like eight or nine different sieves and move their stuff around. So if you have it just instantaneously, it, it sort of speeds up. And what was cool is it had, um, it had a, um, uh, a benchmark test built into the game. And it not only does it, does it test uh, your graphical capabilities, but it also tests the, uh, the AI to see. So it, it will like, throw you into a map with all the civilizations loaded in there and just start firing off turns to see how quickly your computer can keep up with how quickly AI is, is making all these mm. decisions. Um, I think by all accounts, mine was acceptable. I mean, I, I'm not, I wasn't really going to lose my lose my shit if I had to turn it down to a low <laughs> setting because I'm not I'm not a graphics whore yet on my computer. Uh, but yeah, still digging all things on the PC. I've I've, uh, I've got my EA launcher. All right. I've got my uh, my Ubisoft launcher. Mm-hmm. I've got my Steam launcher. Oh yeah. And I still haven't got Peggle. I need to go on Peggle. Oh, there isn't isn't there an EA Origin? Yeah, but isn't there an EA subscription? Uh, I believe there is. is. Isn't it just an Origin? EA Access. Uh, EA Access. Mm. Yeah. Well, I should just buy Peggle. Yeah. I should buy it. Yeah. What's that going to be now? Three quid? Is it not on GOG? It's it's le- it's less than a pint of lager, mate. It is. It is. Less good. than a lager beer. All right, I'm going to treat myself to that because I can't keep playing FTL constantly. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic stuff. So, Rich... Um, We'll expand yours a little more, actually. I'm very keen to understand your background around your discovery of video games, your, your, your path through the various consoles and computers from, from the very beginning. So bring us, bring us, uh, bring us up to date, but start, start from an early age, if so possible. Right from the very start, um, my first experience of any sort of games were text adventure games on... The Texas Instruments computer that my mum and dad had. Yeah. They were cartridge ones that you slammed in the side and it was one of those type go north. Sorry, you can't do that mm-hmm. style games. Um, very quickly, because we had BBC Micros at school, um, my mum and dad wanted to improve the computer. But 
we got an Acorn Electron instead of a BBC Micro. Um, they were made by the same people, essentially. Um, I had That was when the gaming really started, because you could get quite a lot of... They were quite simple, oh, really 8-bit type games. I mean, yeah. although graphically some of them were as good as the Spectrum ones. Um, and that was when I started playing the games. The only problem with that was, as a computer, and I remember this very much so, they had a key which was called the break key. Now, to everybody on who's got a PC these days, you control, alt, delete, press it, hold it down, reset your computer, that sort of thing. With this, no, no, no multiple key combinations, a slight slip of the finger <laughs> over the break key, and you've fucking no. deleted everything you've just done. And, con- and those were back in the days when you would type in things from magazines. Mm. So a quick reach for the delete button that went a little bit too far when you were five and a half pages through typing something in... <laughs> No, oh, that that was a throw it out the window moment. When, um, no, when you were doing that, I I never did that. When you were, when you would sort of like copy from a magazine in that in that in that interface, was there any kind of syntax checking, or did you have to wait until the end and hit run? And if it didn't work, just go through line by line manually. Oh yeah, it didn't auto check it. It would no. run, and then it'd go, and then it'd tell you what the error was at line. Oh, it would tell you. So it would tell you. Which it would, oh, yeah, it'd tell you, and then usually it was just that you'd typed a semicolon instead of a colon or something ridiculous like that, and it'd stop the whole thing from running. Um, so my um, my recollection of that is quite vague. I do remember sitting. I remember buying a magazine, uh, and this was around the Spectrum days. I bought a magazine. It was full of lines of code. And you kind of got little screenshots of what the outcome would be, and tried they tried to display it in a way that made it look really cool, because uh, obviously they needed to sell the magazines. And I'd sit down, and I'd type it all in, and then the at the end result, the output, I always thought, yeah, that's really ace, but it's not as good as the ones I buy on cassette and and load in. But I've I've done my own thing, and you get a little bit of self satisfaction about that, but. I, I don't know if there was a way to do it, but I never... Was I able to actually save that? Or was it just, there you go, if you switch your spectrum off, it's gone forever? Was there a way to commit that and, and almost re- output it as a program? I'm sure you were able to record it to a cassette. Yeah, yeah. but if you, had, if you had that, I'm sure you could, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, that but, bit I don't remember. Did you ever do it enough where you were able to understand what it was you were typing and then go back and then change some parameters and actually see that effect? Like, that, 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 that would have avoided sitting down and being bothered. I just wanted to play the game. <laughs> if, it, if, it, if it got typed in and it worked, I was straight off in there yeah. and, and doing whatever it was. Yeah. I always remember just going sneaking into Dixon's and they'd have their they'd have the little computer section. I know what's coming. Time. So my, my standard go to, which for many other listeners would be ten. Print wanker. Twenty. Go, go. to ten. Yeah. Run. And then fuck off out of shop. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. These days, it's all about it's all about going into an Apple store and going to all the MacBooks and subscribing to your own podcast to bunch it, bunch your numbers up. <laughs> I'd never considered that, Matthew. Is 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 that what you're saying to me? No. Is that, that, that's a thing. No. Well, it may be. It may be. There you go. So that's what are we are we still on the uh, the Helen Keller top ten chart of hot hotness? I think we may have slipped off. You know. Actually, no, that doesn't surprise me, given the frequency of recording. Do, hey. I, do I need to pop into Meadowall's Apple Store? <laughs> no, 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 no. And for the benefit of listeners, we are not suggesting that this... I, I would always like to think that any any kudos we get via the random Helen Keller uh, finger-in-the-air uh, method of aggregating the top podcasts on the Apple Store is through our own doing and not through any shenanigans. Just to be clear. Okay. Now... Now then, after carry that, on. carry on. After that, uh, that was bringing me into the uh, proper console war, for the first console computer war, and that was Commodore versus Spectrum. Um, I was. Be careful now. I, w- I was rubber keyed. Um, I was a 48k Spectrum owner. Okay. Um, I oh, that was probably my favorite, most favorite computer ever. Yeah. To the point where I've got a Spectrum Vega. What's one of those? Is that like a refer, like a kickstarted new oh, thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, no, it's not. It's not the. It's not the kickstarted one that had yeah. all that had all the bullshit around it that they that they, they knackered. This one is a. Um, it's a little. 
spectrum thing and it had because anybody who had a spectrum their rubber keys were constantly worn on the load <laughs> um shift L. two two yeah. that those had already yeah. rubbed off because anything anybody ever used the computer the spectrum floor was was lo- was load quotation marks off you go nobody typed anything in so that only has those keys on it um, <laughs> oh, it's got four keys on it it's got lo- it's got load and, and those keys uh, and it basically it's usb you plug it into the tv and um, you can get sd cards and it comes with about 500 odd games on it so you can sit there and you can play jetpack properly from whatever on your big telly and it does look shit because it's eight because it because it's eight bit on a, or like high definition telly. But zipping around in the jetpack and just collecting the three bits and then dropping pink fuel cartons into it and then rocket takes off and you do the same thing again and again and again and again with just slightly different aliens shooting the same little green lines at you for whatever in a day. Do you, do you um, find that muscle memory kicks in then? Yeah. Almost muscle memory that's never going to go away. Yeah, you play Saber Wolf or something on there and 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 or. What's head over heels with the dog thing that in the, no, the was, isometric games? What was your side scroll? Scramble. That's, that's oh, your, that's your muscle memory. Scramble. Going to. I love that game. I love that game. Is that version of Defender? Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. But I, you, you're talking about jetpack, and I always come to mind because I, I owned the Spectrum initially, and then I went to the to the, the dark the, side, the, the better side, um, easily. Uh, oh, I can't call it that. But I, but well, I had <laughs> but I had jetpack. It was one of the first games I got, and. Uh, I remember there was a there was a, a hack. You could stand in a certain place and on one of the platforms in the top left hand side of the screen, and if you got to the very edge and faced in a certain direction, and you held down the fire key, uh, you wouldn't die. Uh, you were sh- you were destroying enemies that spawned at the mm. left hand side of the screen, and uh, as long as you held down the fire key. You would no never die, and you'd be racking up mm. points because you still got a nominal amount of points for killing the enemies. Um, so I put a weight on the on the fire key, and I uh, I went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the old school equivalent of putting the pla- rubber band around yeah. around yeah. the thumbstick yeah. to get it to do something. Yeah. So uh, any interesting for listeners? Any uh, any old school hacks that you did to uh, to to um, Inflate that score. <laughs> inflate, inflate that score from your early gaming days. Because you did, your leaderboards in those days were on magazines. Were they? Yeah. So uh, there was. You, a, had, you had to take a photo and submit it, didn't you? Well, you did and you didn't, because one of the things that we did was um, me and a friend. Um, <laughs> this goes back to uh, a game called Target Renegade, uh-huh. which was a cooperative side-scrolling beat 'em up that you could have, but. Technically, it never ended because you got to the end, beat the boss, and all it did was throw you back to level one. Sure. And in those days, there was no no game plus, so that was just as easy the next time round. So all it was trying to do was basically, through a war of attrition, make you lose the lives you'd got. Um, we didn't lose a lot of them, and mm. um, so we actually got we we must have gone through about fifteen or twenty times to do it, and the score was to the point where I got well they couldn't cope with the scores. There were nines there. And it couldn't go any further. So we thought, well, we might as well stop and stand that scoring. Right, so that was fine. We sent that in and we thought, we've got to get on the leaderboard. It's it's the biggest score you can ever get. And we bought the magazine regularly and nobody had got that score. So we sent that one off. And there was a little form so you could send off multiple ones. What my mate did, who had been, oh, had been playing the Target Renegade with, um, oh... There was a side scroll. I can't remember the name of the side scrolling shoot 'em up, but it was one with like rooms in. So you'd go through, a bit like Airwolf. If anyone remembers that, you'd have to. You'd, it would be really difficult because it it employed gravity. Yeah. So you had to go through. So some of the things were quite difficult to get through. Um, but what he did was he got bored and made up a score, wrote it on the form, and sent. We sent it into. I think it was Sinclair User at the time, and they had these scores, these uh, charts in. And we so we bought next month's Sinclair user, expecting to see our name there for Target Renegade. He'd not told me he'd done that. I opened it up and I thought, "What the fuck? There's there's no score for Target Renegade. It's all the old scores in." Look across to the uh, the one he'd not told me he'd sent in, and there's his name at the top of the leaderboard. So he made up a score for this. We hadn't got into the legitimate score we'd actually got because they obviously thought that's a wind up. They've just written loads of nines in the hope that it had gone through there. So I'd have loved a screenshot for that because we could have proved we'd done it. 
who I got absolutely no credit for being one of the best target renegade players, and he made up a score. <laughs> I want justice for my score. I think, I think there's a moral <laughs> to that story somewhere. Yeah, yeah, fuck about and you win. <laughs> Fraud can start at any time in your, your life, life, even yeah. at an early, early stage, so be careful. And from that magazine, though, I did win a competition once, and this is the first competition I'd ever won, but it really confused me because I'd forgotten I'd entered the competition, and... Um, it was to win a copy of a game. You just had to send something in or answer a few questions. And I'd sent it in. And I don't know why I entered the competition, because I didn't really understand the TV programme at the time. And it was to win a copy of the spit in image beat em up on the Spectrum. <laughs> and, yeah, it was animated versions of the puppets in their extreme caricatureness beating each other up. So Mikhail Gorbachev was kicking the shit out of Ronald Reagan, but in a beat em up <laughs> style. And I'd forgotten I'd entered the competition. And our brilliant postman had managed to open the package somehow. So it just come through the door, and I thought, oh, that's nice. Copy this beat em up com- thing. Just turned up with a compliment slip from uh, not even the the, uh, the magazine. It was from the shipping company. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Thanks. How did I get this? <laughs> this is, oh, weird shit happened when the Spectrum was out. Mm. Um, so, what, so what happened after the Spectrum for you? Um, the, uh, the Amiga happened okay? after the Spectrum for me. Yeah. Um, Yes, yeah, so that, that, that meant that, so that, so that mean that they didn't sound as good as me on the yeah. ST. Yeah, but there's so many more games, and there's a lot more, even more of a fun machine as opposed to a, a, a synth pop machine. Yeah, they, it might not have done. Um, and that was back when operating systems were workbench. Mm. You, well, there was, there you, was, you, t- you turned it on, and nothing happened. You had to put a disc in the drive if yeah. you what if you wanted yeah. what we now recognise as a, a desktop. Why, there's a reason why the ST one was called TOS. T O S. Because it was. <laughs> it's a ton of shit. <laughs> but I had that, a lot of that, and I got good from places that I probably shouldn't have gotten from. That car boot sales. Yep, those ones I had. That was the three and a half inch floppy disc era, so you got. Val- you'd, have little, you'd have a little cabbie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 with all those. Val through some, yeah. some of your favourites. Um, oh, God. Uh, I had a. I can't remember. I, I had I had that many I I had it I can't remember the name of the game but all it, all it, well, it was kind of a, like the defender style thing but they'd taken it and they'd skinned it like um were, uh, sh- proper battleships and and things mm. but instead of rescuing um sorry s- <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of rescuing prisoners you were having to go in and attack the ships and proper they had proper air- anti aircraft guns on and it was like amazing compared to what you played on the spectrum. And you would be having to get low enough to drop torpedoes, and if you weren't low enough, they didn't fire off, and things. Mm. Lots of different mechanics like that that you'd never really experienced on the basic move left, move right shooting games that yeah. you had that you had on the Spectrum. Um, another world that was that ah, was good yes. on the Spectrum. Ah, yeah. That was, when that came out, that was absolutely amazing. I'm remembering some Devil of them now. Technology, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I absolutely loved. Bitmap Brothers games on the Amiga, mm. um, and that's a lot of people did. But uh, Magic Pockets, that was <laughs> graphically <laughs> that was abs- graphically that would look like so smooth. It was it probably still hold up boot. today. Yeah, I think it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody yeah. pulling world world wins out your pocket. Yeah, so yeah, because that was the whole thing. You got the kid. It was a platform, and you yeah. had to kill stuff. But then there were Magic Pockets, and you were throwing all manner of stuff out of these pockets. God, that music um, was good. Gods. Oh, yes. the the music on Bitmap Brothers games is one is my I put it on one of the pages on the um, Facebook page. It's my favorite ever. They um, bombed the base for um, bit for Zen Zenon Two. 2. Yeah. Did a re, yeah. did the Mega Blast remix of and it's a brilliant theme tune in its own right. The Assault on Precinct Thirteen mm. for the, from the John Carpenter film and it just fits that so well because it, they, if you can get you, you kind of zone out and it's, the bass and the pumping on it. Is almost firing the shots at the same time as you're going through. It was a ridiculously difficult vertical scrolling shoot up, but you didn't mind when you were listening to a soundtrack like that. It was absolutely <laughs> ace. Can we all admit now in the the first Xenon was a bit trash? I never I don't think I played it. Yeah, Xenon. I mean, the same as Speedball Two. That's like, the first. The, the first iteration was okay, but they took away all the learnings from the first iteration and. Made the second version so much better. I like Red Dead Redemption. I was going to come on yeah. to Speedball too. Yeah, that was yeah. An, that was another one of my go to, of my go tos uh, on that. When you were Chaos the... Engine. There's another yeah. one. That was that was Gauntlet, and as you can see from some of the stuff here, yeah. in a steampunk game, 
Well, yeah, so you've got all the shit going on that was kind of Sherlock Holmes, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen type of thing. Um, and it was it was a top-down gauntlet game. What was not to like? Everybody loved gauntlet in the arcades in, the, in those days. You had, you had four characters to pick from. You co-opted with people. You could you could mix and match them, and and you were doing all that, but in a real for the time in a really lush environment with the character with the games on them, with mm-hmm. football manager and things like that. But those are staples for people to go to. I think I had loads of games. I mean, like your high fantasy stuff. Did you play many RPGs from that time? Not on, not massively on there. They were. Um, They didn't really. They didn't really have anything that. You you could save games, but I don't ever remember having something that I wanted to play, save and come back to in terms of an, in terms of that. Mm. For me, at that point, I was still. Play, it was still a case of I wanted to get something that I could turn on, play for a little bit, Media gratification. switch it off. Yeah, it, well, it, well, I didn't want anything long term to do. Mm. Syndicate. There's another one. Oh, the, yes. The, and both of them, because they did Syndicate 2, which was uh, uh, came out on the same thing. Um, but the first one uh, on there, and uh, what, uh, did they have MechWarrior games on there? I can't remember. Uh, but definitely Syndicate, that was another one to add it, to add into that list of sort of go-to ones. Because I love um, real-time strategies. So you can get... My first encounters with real-time strategies were probably the original Command & Conquer uh, Tiberian, not the Tiberian Fields, that was one of the other ones, but the basic Command and Conquer. Yeah, GDI and the um, Nod. Yeah, GDI and the Nod. And you got on there, it was the first time that I'd ever seen proper digitised FMV, FMVs that, that had come on and yeah. with actual stuff. Well, up to that point, it had been um, just very well drawn cartoon style graphics that they were lip syncing to text to. These were proper people talking at you. Do you remember the? If you, I don't know if you remember this, but if you can, when you completed the game as uh, the Brotherhood of Nod, and I had a save file just before the end of the last mission, yeah, I think you you deployed an orbital satellite, and Kane, Kane, yeah, he, he, he lets you choose one of four targets to destroy. I think it was like the Buckingham Palace, uh, the White House, pyramids, or something, and you get to see the big explosion. Then so I just reloaded it four times. I'll watch. I'll, <laughs> just... I'll watch orbital satellites blow up shit for days. <laughs> That yeah, speaks a lot to your uh, to your, to the person you are now, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> so Amiga, to... Amiga sounds like it was a it was a, it was a really cool part of your life. Sounds cool. like you, you you did something very similar to a lot of the the lot of listeners would have done. Um, if I recall, Amiga was around the time I'm thinking just beyond Amiga. I think that was my first foray into into gaming consoles. How about you? My first console uh, was a PlayStation One. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, and I've never gone away from. I've all I've owned every iteration of the PlayStation up to and including the present one. Yeah, uh, I've never strayed from that. Uh, when I say strayed, I mean I've never gone and just solely bought an Xbox. I do have mm. an Xbox three hundred and sixty, and I've got an Xbox One S, but they've always been secondary to to PlayStation. So if something's coming out on both, I'll get it on the PlayStation first. So what so what happened during that period between the Amiga and the and the PlayStation One? Because that because that, that that's, so that's a bit, a, of, time, that's a bit of time there, mate. You don't, you're not giving us the full story. I, girls, did you did you find girls? Did you find, find it was it was loosely music? PC gaming, but not a lot of it because I didn't have very much money. No, um, so it tended to be more of that. And I th- and at that sort of age, I was playing a lot more of um, Dungeons and Dragons and. Uh, the tabletop war games, ah, not girls. So, so yeah, you went, so you went analog for a while. So yeah, so basically the Amiga ended. My life became Stranger Things, and then <laughs> and then I then, no! I then I then I then I bought a console. So, yeah, because so, that's it. Because actually, when I think about it, that, that initial bit of Stranger Things to go slightly back to telly when they're playing D anD D in, in the guy's basement. Yeah. Just move it up to the living room of someone's house instead, yeah. and that that was us. Amazing. That was us doing and doing that. Brilliant. Did, um, you, did you have a go to? Were you were you a, were you a player or you were a player, GM type? Player usually. Yeah. Yeah. What was your what was your go to character and what was its alignment? Uh, chaotic good always. Okay. I always referred to it as the Robin Hood uh-huh. alignment. So you're basically out for yourself, but you don't mind helping a mate out if they're in a bit of a pickle. Yeah. Um, and it would be something along the lines of a ranger. Yeah. So, a little, little bit sneaky. Yeah. Give him a good whack with a longbow and leg it. 
<clears throat> do you subscribe to the thought that uh, there's no such thing as true neutral? I don't. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think I, you can write it on your character sheet, but nobody can ever play true neutral mm. because you've got to. At some point, you're going to take a side with someone, and that's what it's not. You're not meant to do. <laughs> well, again, sort of going back to Game of Thrones. Would you have classed uh, post post falling out of a uh, out of a very high tower, uh, Bran Stark? Would you, would you class him as true neutral? Oh, because he was... he's kind of like he didn't fucking do it. He, he was he? true emo towards the end. He just <laughs> sat there and like listened to My Chemical Romance and going, "Oh, I don't know." Yeah, but he never he, he never looked miserable. He, he he just he was just expressionless. So <laughs> when you mention true, true neutral, I just think of Bran Stark because he's just <laughs> he's just sitting there just staring at and and saying stuff which people don't really understand. He might be right there. Mm. He might be the only true neutral to ever have existed. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so I got PlayStation 1 yeah. as my first console. Um, loads of good games that I remember playing on there. Uh, if I had to pick them out, Hogs of War will always be one of my favourite games the ever. No, Hogs of War was... Um, was that Rick Mayle? Yeah. Even that one, yeah. It was the, yeah. Uh, he did all the, voice, the voices, all the voices for them. Yeah. So, Hogs of War. <coughs> imagine, <coughs> imagine Lemmings, right. but flatten it out and make it 3D. Okay. So you've got... Uh, either side is attempting to kill the other side in a military way. Um, but instead of, le- instead of worms, you've got a whole bunch of pigs dressed in military garb, hence Hogs of War and Born to Grill. Um, <laughs> that was the tagline. Um, and you're just on these different landscapes trying to blow each other up. But what made it even more fun, as Darren's already said, was every single uh, nation had its own speech pack and all the voices that were done for each nation was Rick Mayle being that nation. Right. Um, That's and, a hole and going down later. And he would... It, but... And, but if you were crap, he would have a go at you. Yeah. Saying things like his grandmother could shoot better and stuff like that <laughs> on it. But he would also congratulate you had you done a really good shot. Um, that was my first experience on the PlayStation 1 of uh, race, real proper racing games as well. Uh, Gran Turismo 1 on, on the PlayStation 1 was pretty much mind-blowing at the time for the way that the, the, the graphics looked and the actual physics of the cars. And you could go in and you could fanny around with every oh, single setting that was in there. And, and the wealth of But you could just well. play it with auto setups as well, and you could do it. And you'd got a garage you could save, and you'd customise the cars. You could add shit to them, and you know you could paint them funny colours if you wanted to, and do all that sort of stuff. So I really started to love uh, race, the racing games then. I fell out of love with Gran Turismo since, but yeah, I got that and then uh, started to play those a lot. Uh that was also on the PlayStation. That was my first sort of um, look into the world of GTA, as was. Um, didn't really get super involved in it until the second, until PlayStation Two. Um, Vice City. And I, I was the back end of Vice. I played some of Vice City and thought, you know what, I really like this, but I haven't got the time to go back and play it. Yeah. So when I, the first GTA game I really got stuck into was GTA San Andreas. Okay. Um, with Samuel L. Jackson voicing the mm-hmm. cop and, and all that sort of stuff. That was the first one that I really... That was PlayStation 2. I really got involved in um, with that. Um, on PlayStation 2, again, I had, I had the iterations of Gran Turismo that came out with it. I think it was GTA 3 A-Spec was, mm-hmm. the, was, the, was the main one that was on that. That, that, um, that feeder doing the, uh, the intro song. Yeah. Oh, that, that, was the, that soundtrack that's on there is one of the first ones when I actually sort of really paid attention to music and games because I would kind of like that sort of music already. So I thought, oh, hang on a minute. I know I know that record. What else, what else is on here? I think it might have the Eagles of Death Metal are in there and stuff like that. And um, th- there's, a few, there's a few other tracks. Distillers have got one on there. I'm probably talking rubbish to a lot of people now, but they've got some really good music on. You think this is mainstream music. It's finally hit the games that oh, I like. Yeah, the, the moment I heard that feeder song come out as a single, I heard it on the radio, I'm like... Oh, this is this is this is this is from Grand Turismo Three. My, yeah. my my world has just been expanded. <laughs> so I got all yeah. So I was loving all those. Um, at that time, also one of my two brothers had got a PlayStation Two as well. So I have inherited some of the really shit games that he bought as well. Uh, I've got something called Enter the Matrix, 
which I have no idea what it is because I've never put it in, but it existed. Everything had a film tie-in at that point. Yeah, You could get loads of things left, right and centre for, for, for all of them. Um, Red Faction, I would start to dabble with first-person mm. shooters yeah. at that point because I didn't have the uh, Nintendo access to Gold. I've never yeah. been able to get anywhere near GoldenEye at that point, so I was playing those. I think Call of Duty 2 was on the PlayStation 2, if I remember. Um, and that was back in the proverbial day when it wasn't any of this multiplayer bollocks. It was a, Call of Duty Two it was World War Two with a story, and you went and you went yeah. through it, and you played the you played the same soldier I mean, going I through miss the missions. Those times. Well, we had that, we had Medal of Honor, didn't we as well? We had Medal of Honor on the PlayStation, yeah. Hmm. Then we get to PlayStation Three, or so we're almost right, kind of right up to date now. We carried on with liking the Gran Turismo's and that kind of thing, but I was at this point getting more in. With uh, things like Skyrim and and that and that kind of stuff, loving me an open world game. Didn't that one like a bag of balls on the PS3 when it came out? Yeah. So this that is why you got this. Is why exactly <laughs> why I then when you know what I love Skyrim. I love the fucking idea of this because as you you know it's it's right in my wheelhouse that. But I am not paying it if it crashes and fucks up every every five minutes. Um, so what I need here is an, is an alternative. A Skyrim machine. So my Skyrim machine was 360. <laughs> but because, obviously, Bethesda involved with Skyrim and, and, and whatnot, making it not work properly, uh, the version of the Xbox that I bought also came with Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3. Ah, oh, excellent. So I got all three of those, basically, because I wanted to, to play the that. Because open world games became my thing in that generation. Red Dead, the Fallout games, Skyrim. I still like my racing games, but it was those going back. You know, that's I'll probably must have, right back when I couldn't save them on the, on the Amiga. I'd harboured some sort of RPG style thing to play them on there. And that's what got me on the Xbox 360. And I've loved Fallout games. 76 accepted ever since uh, and then playstation 4 um at this point i was kind of getting back uh, no sorry but i back when i had the ps3 i was also doing quite a lot of pc gaming in the form of world of warcraft and um, we've all done it mate yeah that, that was when, that was a thing for about eight when, or nine years in my life out? when did you fall off for expansion and so we'd had it was the Ice King one that involved opening up the north of the map, northern Azeroth. Left to me then. Um, there was a whole bunch with that, and they we'd got the um, undead floating cube instance was in. Um, so we had quite a good raiding guild at the time. We did we we were maybe about two thirds of the way through all the raids as they stacked up it was really just the top end ones that we weren't capable of doing have you been back to it since just to see what it looks like no it's a different game I don't I, I, I'm treating World of Warcraft as like when you're not supposed to meet your heroes I think if I go back to it now it'll be just a disappointment that's a good show because even when I was playing there was power creep on stuff um, and by stuff I mean armour and weapons you'd get when I first started playing it was level 60 yep cap then it'd gone to level 80. I think now it might have even gone to 100. I don't know. I think it's, it's three figures easily now, yeah. Um, but because of that, they needed weapons and armour to do it. So you were up to, even then you were up to about tier 8 armour, which had ridiculous stats that it was adding to it. You looked like Danny LaRue wearing that sort of stuff. There was that flipping <laughs> stuff going on. It was it was weird. Um, but yeah, I'd, so I stopped playing that. I dabbled with EVE Online at that time as well. And... Back in that's got a barrier to entry, hasn't it? It didn't have then. It has now, uh, in as much as there are there's a paywall between standard and premium accounts, in that you can't have ships beyond a certain level. When I was playing it with a couple of friends before um, that came in, everything was fair game. You could have anything you wanted if you could research the and, and add and buy the ships that cost millions of ions, something like that. I don't know, whatever the mm. currency is, you, you could have them. Now, you you have to be paying it. Um, so that was, sort of, I suppose, the online stuff as well came for me then, but it was via PC rather than um, console. And then now, 
in this current gen PS4, uh, my big thing, as a lot of people will know, is I play a lot of World of Tanks. Um, mainly because I like the whole engineering thing. Yeah. And and I love that that side of history. It gives me an excuse to play play some of the iconic vehicles of the time. Uh, still, now we're doing World of Shame and so on. Play the other stuff. World of Shame, Year of Shame. World of Shame, Year of Shame. Life, my, life of Shame. My, my life of shame, as yeah. it's been sort of the last however, whatever. Um, but I've, um, and also in this gen now, more horror survival games. I've always owned them, and Resident Evil has been a go-to for me. But there's never really been beyond that anything that sort of scratched that itch other than the Resident Evil series. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't. I've never bought six because it was becoming an action game when you bought five. Really, four was good. Five was more of an action game, and six was nothing like the horror survival that had gone before. So I left that alone. I've got seven, which I haven't played yet. Um, but now you've got a whole host of that sort of thing. So you've got um, the Evil Within. I own both of those. When I finished the first one, Dying Light. Um, the Resident, Evil, the Resident Evil games, um, you've got some of the things that aren't necessarily shock horror games, but things like Layers of Fear and that kind of stuff. They do, because you've got the graphic fidelity to do stuff, you, you can make the scares better. That PlayStation in there still has the PT trailer on it. <laughs> I've still got that. I've still I, got that side. I refuse to delete it. <laughs> is it, is for it, it worth, but if it's worth money now still to, people, sell, to sell the PS4? I don't know whether it, it was. A, it, there was a time when it was. People mm. were sell, deleting everything else off it and saying, yeah. you can buy my PlayStation 4 with the now unavailable PT trailer on it. And yeah. they were making shitloads on eBay for it. Um, well, that's kind of my go-to, go-to mm. now uh, for those. I've... Again, it's open world games. I loved mm. the, the ending on the original Red Dead. That's the one game. But people have periodically people ask the question: If you as a game you could forget, go back and play end to end again yeah. and re-experience it, I would always say Red De- the original Red Dead Redemption. Mm. So I think that f- follows through and follows to yeah. a really great climax with the story with John Marston's story. So any PlayStation Four console, black with rare PC game, pre-owned, seven hundred and fifty pounds. Oh no, shit! No one's bidding on it. It's also one for two fifty, one for four fifty, but people are still trying it. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you go. Because uh-huh. that was uh, shouldn't fucking delete mine, should I? No, it was the Kojima game that got canned by Capcom. Yeah, no, I, 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 Capcom. I never finished it off, but it revealed um, the Norman Reedus potent, um, from Death gosh, st- from, the Death Stranding. No, it wasn't Death Stranding. It was um, was it Alone in the Dark? They were rebooting. Right. It wasn't Alone in the Dark. It was certainly. They were, they, were, he was, they were rebooting one of the horror franchises with Norman Reedus, and yeah, obviously they, they, they fell out with, uh, with Kojima, so he's all death stranding, and I don't know what the hell that is. I just thought it was. <laughs> no, I thought it was, was going to be no. simulator. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's, it's walking simulator. But yeah, so that, um, that, that bit of gaming there. Yeah. Yeah. I keep, forget, world, I keep forgetting that, stuff. That World of Tanks <laughs> sounds interesting. I might have to check that out. You should check that yeah, out. I'll, I think you'd like World of Tanks, Darren. Well, you know. I don't know. I, I never really stick to games very long, do I? No. Silent Hills. Silent Hills. That's the one. Yes. God bless Google. Okay. Well, I think that brings us right. I'm out, today, doesn't it? I'm out. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was that was really interesting. I always, always like you know when we meet new people, you get an understanding yeah. of where where they've come from. And you never have these conversations in real life, do you? Normally. Well, no. It's normally too much alcohol's been had. Mm. Yeah. I've only ever owned one Nintendo. Which one? Game Boy. Okay. Like most of us. <laughs> Atari links for me. Yeah, eight batteries at a time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, there's not a lot. There's not a lot to come from me from a digital perspective because I've spent most of it abroad, and I did, to all intents and purposes, abandon all technology. And the reason for that is that the uh, the shitty the shitty internet in the hotel, which wasn't shitty really, they just throttled it. Yeah. And offered to sell you premium internet, but I went, no, not having none of that because um, because reasons. But what it did force me to do was completely abandon my phone and not have it switched on because we were only allowed two two free connections for our room. So I, I took my Chromebook with me. So I thought, right, I'm going to work smart here. I'll let the good lady hook her phone up so she can do all the Googling and, and all the associated business throughout the day. Uh, and I will just reserve my my connection for 
the odd hour mm. in, in an evening so I can watch my YouTubes and I can watch um, you know whatever uh, hopefully I was going to be able to watch Game of Thrones but there was region locking etc etc which I kind of expected anyway uh, but more importantly for me I was still able to play Eternal and do, do my dailies <laughs> and, uh, and and get all that good stuff going on I, I love that game and I spoke to you both about it um, you know uh, recently um, and you Rich being as you've got an Xbox One that is um that that is a strong That's, recommendation for me, particularly you know I'm I'm very very aware that you you know you've got a good a good history of uh, collectible card games, trading card games. Yeah. So I think I'll be right right up your alley. But like I said, I want to hook you up with the uh, with the old uh, Uncle Fister referral link, and <laughs> um, you know we'll make sure that uh, referrals. The, the, the goodness uh, comes both our ways. Uh, but that's that's all from a digital perspective. I do now own a copy of Blood, Bloodborne. And I also do have a Kickstarter successfully funded Balls Deep All In edition, which has cost me more money than I care to think about, let alone discuss. Um, so that'll be coming sometime in 2020. In the meantime, God help me, I hope I enjoy this game. Because <laughs> that, for me, the, the depth of what I, of how, how deep I get into Bloodborne, the video game, will equate to how much I look forward to and enjoy playing the board game regardless of how good the board game is um, for me uh, theme theme is important and if I can get a good thematic game under under my uh, under my nose and onto the table uh, I'm it, it's kind of halfway there for me I've seen what they've got in that Kickstarter and I've played Bloodborne and it looks very good all right I'll trust you then. certainly from the point of view of how um of, of the content they've included mm -hmm. so you will definitely go through that game and then you'll play the board game and you'll recognize the shit that's going on that's what board I want. that's what I want from the things that you've had to do yeah. how the mechanics build in the difficulty yeah. of bloodborne obviously is, is yeah. yet to be seen but yeah some of the uh, you've seen the bosses and bits and pieces for, um, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm aware of the bloodborne's yeah. yes yeah you'll uh, You'll, you'll definitely get that vibe yeah. from it. Yeah. Is it the same firm who did the De Dark Soul game doing it? Uh, no, uh, it's uh, Simon who are a big. Uh, they're, they're big Kickstarter people. They always uh, do their stuff through Kickstarter. They're they're heavy on miniatures, uh, but their their the quality of their miniatures is is, is up there. It's triple A grade, um, and and for a lot of people, they buy they buy uh, Simon games just for the miniatures. Um, you know, which is a testament to how, uh, how how good the production of those is. But the Dark Souls game is just as good, though, even though it's mm -hmm. not by them, because I've got that. What well, you told me last night that as soon as you crack the uh, crack the lid on, on on Dark Souls, the first thing you get is a little message saying you have died. Oh yeah, on the board game. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I love it. Little, little touches like that just make all, all the difference. That's um, that's Steam Forged Games. Yes. Who did? That's why you get the same thing on the Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. They do. They specialize in taking. Um, video games and bringing them to a tabletop environment mm. but trying to maintain as much of the feel as you can possibly and part of that that they do is if there's a if there's a classic loading screen or death screen for yeah. it they will just put that as the th first thing that you will do when you open the box yeah yeah I mean there's a so that's that'll be my second video game related Kickstarter that I'm uh, that, that I'm in in for at the moment and the other one was uh, Assassin's Creed uh, which has been done by Triton Noir Games. They're a French company, and they saw great success with uh, a game called V Commandos. So they've taken that that game engine, uh, which for for V Commandos, which is like a World War Two game, uh, it's all about stealth. It's all about achieving things without alerting the enemy. So it kind of falls into that uh, Assassin's Creed um, style of, of gameplay very very easily. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm quite conscious that we've been uh, we've been banging on for a little while. I think uh, I don't want you guys uh, think, but maybe we should just take a short break, drop a little uh, local chip tunage in, maybe, and um, we'll go and refresh ourselves and come right back to bring you part two. So uh, let's enjoy some pulp. <laughs> Do whatever common people do Wanna sleep with common 
see what I can do. I took it to a supermarket. I don't know why, but I had to start it somewhere. So it started there. I said, I turned you got no money. She just laughed and said, Everybody hates a tourist Especially one who thinks it's all such a laugh Yeah And the chips in your grease Will come out in the bath And you will never understand How it feels to live your life Without meaning or control And with nowhere left to go You are amazed that they exist And they burn so And we're back, ah, all suitably oh. refreshed, 
and uh, and all that good yep. stuff. So um, I guess this is the point where we normally go into the analog space and we talk about board games we've been playing. It just so happens, and has become the tradition over the the, the last few home invasions, is that we we do have a little bit of table time to talk about. Um, you know, because it's a good thing when people come together. It's a, it's a great way of uh, enjoying each other's company and getting some gaming on at the same time. So. Um, We'll, we'll talk about Friday, so uh, the, this will have been just me and you, Rich, yes. and, the, and the good lady. We played a game called uh, Black Orchestra, uh, which was a uh, which was a Kickstarter game. Uh, it's now come to uh, it's now come to retail, so it is it is available mm-hmm. for all listeners. Yeah, uh, I think you'll pick it up for around fifty pounds. Um, here or there, give or take a couple of quid. Uh, so, what is what is Black Orchestra? Well, it's a it's a game set in World War Two Germany, and uh, it centres around uh, various plots to assassinate Hitler. Uh, when obviously um, certain parts of the German military were getting concerned, and they weren't entirely happy with what Hitler was doing, and they were they were just trying to get rid of him. So, it's actually based on on, on real world real world events. Yeah. And this is translated into uh, a board game. And I would say if anyone's played Pandemic, uh, I could mm. draw a few comparisons with that because you are, you're, you're kind of, um, you've got various parts of uh, of Germany in the in the Eastern Front on the map, uh, moving around, uh, pulling uh, pulling cards that uh, relate to various plots that you can um, you can collect items. Uh, to uh, to support the requirements to fulfil that plot to try and kill Hitler because ultimately uh, you can do all these good things but th- th- there's a couple of challenges within the game and I'll, Rich I'll let you speak about it a little more in a second but when you are uh, you, you can be in a position where you're ready to kill Hitler but you need to you need to be in the same place as Hitler <laughs> and there are cards that are being drawn that will move Hitler and his henchmen uh, for want of a better phrase all around the board. Um, so it's it's almost like with every draw of every card, there could be something that could stop you from enacting the uh, enacting the plot. And even if you get to the position uh, of being able to attempt that to assassination on him, uh, you've still got to roll some dice and come up with some pretty pretty lucky rolls. Um, Rich, do you want to talk talk a little about the game? Yeah, I, you, that's a pretty good introduction for for all of it um it i don't know what i don't know i don't, I don't, I, I don't know what more to well, well, I, I i tell you what what struck me as i was playing it i i felt i felt it was very thematic it felt it felt as as i as if i was one of the conspirators plotting to to, to kill hitler and almost as you as you're moving around the board uh, and we were, in, and it's a cooperative game. So there's myself and you and your good lady. Uh, so we were, we were, we were having conversations in a, in a similar way, I guess, to the to the conspirators. Were saying, well, well, I need, I need this. I need a map, and I need some poison, or I need, a, I need yeah, some weapons. Yeah. And well, I see that you've got, you've got weapons, Rich. So if we can get ourselves to the same place, we can maybe hand them off to each other. Or I see that there is. You know, there's some there's a, there's some documents over in uh, I don't know over in the um, Warsaw or, or Warsaw, somewhere. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll go and get that. But there, but all the time there is there is kind of a timer associated with the game. So yeah. there's an event card that gets drawn at the start of each player's turn. Yeah. So it it runs in the, to simulate mm. the, the 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 timing of the war. Yeah. You you do you have the seven set stages of mm. the game, and and the events that are within there do mirror. The correct order, yeah. if you like, for history buffs that they that they went through. So you know, and towards the start of the game, Hitler's military might, which is a key factor in being able to take him down, because that represents his support within mm. his own people, his, his loyalists. It's it's going up, but as we all know, there came a point where that started to wane and yeah. it went down. So the the game itself represents those as you as you go through and do all the different act and, and take all the different actions um and the char- and the characters you play are actually real, real oh yeah real they are I mean, you, people. you mentioned that you know you you've got the conspiracy and it's actual mm. real world events that it's based on um anybody who has seen the film valkyrie yeah 
will know about the von Stauffenberg plot to use the suitcase yeah. bomb yeah. Yeah. in the room to blow up Hitler. And one of the Hitler, one of the attempts you can make is to put together a, a suitcase bomb, get it in the right place, and take him out. Mm. But von Stauffenberg exists within that as as a character in the right organization yeah. to do that. They are the head, the chiefs of staff that he didn't like. There's even the civilians which were taking great risks to actually be part of the uh, plots against him, but were supporting the guys in the military who didn't want to do it. So you've got a vast choice of the characters, and they are bringing out um, an expansions with other uh, well-known conspirators or potential conspirators from the war yeah. within that to to expand it. And as you go through, you do have to start to plot stuff uh, in in the sense of the coordination that you need and it really isn't easy to get him no. and uh, at all no. um we managed it needless to say we, we killed hitler yeah and if and if i never play the game again i could say right well i've got a hundred percent success rate with black orchestra which is not what many people can say on this planet but no i, I would i know that that's a game that i really enjoyed and I will be, uh, I mean, I'm going to the UK Games Expo next weekend. Um, so I'll be hoping to pick my own copy up because I, I really enjoyed it that much. I got, I got a lot out of it. Really enjoyable. Very thematic, very engaging. I love cooperative games anyway. Uh, so it ticks a lot of boxes for me. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I do have a, have a keen interest in all things World War II. So, uh, I, I'm glad you liked it because it's not everybody's cup of tea, that. It's, mm. Some people don't like the whole... They don't like the theme of it, which it's mm. very strong. Which yeah. it is very strong on. They yeah. kind of go, oh, "It's the war. I don't don't want to touch it because of the things that happened are you, are you, in it." Are you, are you pulling random event things? Which I don't know. Um, you actually, you're planning something, and then you pull a, a card and have to remember that a load of people just died because of something, something, something. And again, it's just really reiterating the mm. badness of that well, one. I understand in the original printing of the game um, when you went to score your um, success, depending on how early on in the game you, you, you successfully killed Hitler, which is a challenge in itself, uh, but if you do manage to succeed in killing him the, 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 the book will actually tell you how many lives you saved Ooh. on the back of uh, yeah. on the back of saving him, yeah. Yeah. on the back of killing him Yeah, it, it did yeah. It, it did have it did have that they've seen they subsequent they've ta they've taken that out so yeah. you can't but it does it does mention sort of his persecution his persecution of the G persecution use words of of the Jews of the invasions of various parts of Europe and so on they they are key events within it um so without telling you that a lot of people died you know that there's been mm. there's been bloodshed mm. at those points. Um, with what goes on, mm. but I, di I didn't. I didn't sense any um, any insensitivity in the production of this game. I think it was all very, very faithfully reproduced. Um, it's not glorifying any anything not. at all. No. Absolutely not. If anybody thinks it's a sort of a big hurrah towards what went on, it's not. The whole the whole point is you're trying to do mm. something um, heroic yourself. Mm. It's more about the people and their struggle mm. to fight that yeah. rather than. The more general stories that get told about the yeah. war in films that's, that concentrate yeah. on the fighting. There's there's almost something uh, almost dark and oppressive about the art style that they use. I, I do I love I love the art style of this game, and it and it reminds me a little bit. And and don't ask me how I draw the comparison, but I remember playing Escape from Colditz when I was a kid, and that is quite an abstract game. You know, there's lots of little spaces on the mm. board, but you just about make the outline of the uh, of, of, of of the castle, um, but the just even the fonts that they use and the and, and, and the colours that they choose and the, and, and the, the graphical imagery, um, it all it all, up. it all feeds into this kind of dark, sinister feeling. You've even got the dice that aren't that, that pearl white that yeah. you would expect from yeah. that. They're that slightly more putty coloured, yeah, um, almost wooden look, yeah, to them that adds mm. to. Bringing it down a level from being a bright, happy world that you're possibly playing the game in. Yeah. So Black Orchestra, get big two thumbs up from me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Look forward to uh, to, to playing it again. Um, so then we jump forward to yesterday, and uh, we were joined by Matthew. So we, we it, it's a rare opportunity for me to see some some really cool multiplayer activity going on. 
Uh, but interestingly, the first game we're going to talk about, um, which is course base, um, the, the the base game of uh, of that is designed for two players, and the way two players would normally play is uh, you play um, uh, one player plays one trader uh, group. Uh, another player plays the other trader group and between you you manage the AI of the enemies uh, I, I was very keen to have both of you play it for the first time so I effectively GM'd that game uh, with as much kind of basic knowledge of the rules I have given the amount of YouTube videos and reading that I've done while I was on holiday and <laughs> um, if you ask my good lady, she'd almost say Colin from Battle Systems was on holiday with us as well, because that's all she could hear was was Colin talking about this game. Who's a, who's a designer from the UK? This is a, this is a British based company that produces game Battle Systems, and Core Space is a uh, miniatures skirmish game uh, with some beautifully constructed terrain. Um, which adds uh, which adds so much theme to, to to what's going on. You know, you're actually moving figures around um, a, a constructed area with walls, and there's there's scatter, there's furniture, there's there's all kinds of good stuff going on, which really draws you into the uh, the game. And I've never actually I've never actually owned a skirmish game. This is my th my, my, my first one. And I'm glad it's my first one because I'm, I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it of what I've played so far. Um, so Core Space is set around 1500 years in the future. Um, humanity has expanded beyond the planet Earth. They're, 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 they're taken to the stars, exploring the galaxy. And we're in a space now where um, uh, we've got people that... Uh, are just trading they're, they're traders think of yourselves as kind of lando calrissian slash um han solo types you're a bit roguish you, you you're just scraping money together from job to job you know your ship's knackered you, you your equipment's buggered <laughs> and you're just trying to you know, make make your way and carve out a living the problem here is that we're on the perseus arm of the galaxy which is right at the outer edge of where uh, where humanity is explored and we've got this influx of a, of a race called the Purge, who are very Borg-like. They're uh, they're cybernetic um, cybernetic uh, adversaries who are just hell bent on absor absorbing all and consuming all biomass. So anything that's living, mm -hmm. they're just coming after it. So we're you know we're trying to make our way and scrape together and grab weapons and scrabble together money to 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 survive. But while we're doing this, there's this increasing threat of the purge coming towards us and finding us and that's almost like an artificial timer for the game you know so you can run around and do as much as you want and, and, and grab as much stuff but ultimately it's going to get harder and harder and harder because at the beginning of each round you are you're you're, you're rolling dice or you're drawing you're drawing an event card which may affect what happens for the rest of that round um and then the traders will do their stuff but then it's the purge's turn and depending on the level of the threat that's uh, the, the, the game's at at any given point in time will determine what dice mm. are rolled or even at later point which purge automatically appear on on the game board um the, from from a rules perspective it, it, it and, and you i'll let you guys speak to it in, in a second but to me the rules seem very kind of common sense and natural so each each trader so you guys both had um three characters each you had a captain and two two crew members so the captain was a little more skillful uh, had a few more skills to call upon uh, when, when the time demanded it um, so you do your stuff you, you do all your moves mm -hmm. and each player has sort of two standard actions and then an effortless action so an effortless action will be just like simple things like uh, plugging yourself with a med stim to try and restore your health or you might pick up something quickly off the floor it, it just felt very kind of common sense uh, and we're applying those rules throughout even even through the combat mm -hmm. you know if you're you, you could you, you could use a melee weapon and roll, roll maybe one die for a standard attack or roll two die for a more powerful attack but the risk the risk of making that more powerful attack is that you might break your weapon so there's always kind of a risk versus reward and, the, and, and that really comes into play later in the game as these purge start to amass on the board and continue to, to come and, 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 and you've got to make a decision at some point I need to book it back to the ship with the ship that I've got because the object of the game that we played yesterday was that you just needed to get away. You need to you needed to get in and get out with as much gear as possible. Because every piece of gear that you find has a value to it. 
uh, it's UA uh, Universal Assets, and at the end of the game, uh, we would we would be tallying up our, uh, our our assets, and whoever had the most would be the the, the winner. So enough uh, enough gaggling from me. Um, I want I want to hear your guys' opinions on uh, on, on what you thought of it. Uh, I, uh, I I digged it. I mean, you mentioned this was a skirmish game. Yes. Is that because you were using essentially a tape measure to dictate distance and, and firing distances? Because I've never seen you play a game with that. And that reminds me of Warhammer. Yeah, I think there's... I mean, if you ask me to define what, what a skirmish game is, I couldn't tell you because mm. I'm, I'm not at that... I'm not at that level with this genre, uh, but I always hear it being referred to as a skirmish game. So I'm going to assume, dudes on a map, there's a physical space that you're working with. There's there, there, there's distance involved when you're calculating line of fire and yeah. um, uh, you know whether it's a short range, medium range, long range shot. Um, but the actual physicality, you know, there is terrain, there are walls, there are things you can hide behind. There's, you know, the, 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 the scenery doesn't only just serve as a per purpose cosmetically, but you actually use it to your advantage in certain parts of the game. So I could go and open a crate and then I could position myself with an effortless action to move one inch around so that I'm potentially impartial cover if the purge actually on their turn wanted to take a shot at me because being impartial cover will reduce the amount of damage that i potentially take mm. just mm. through the, the definition of the rules of the game i think with skirmish games one of the things is a lot of people will, will relate to the large-scale battles from warhammer or warhammer 40,000. you've got armies with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of figures on the game that we were playing was in a restrictive area with the cover and we had a tiny number of figures um, which was like a, a single small squad, if, mm. if you like. I think that's where the idea of skirmish versus full scale battle, mm. um, sort of the line, the line goes there. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. mm. I mean, the uh, the 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 board, the board itself is like the board was just a uh, uh, was it cloth? It's, it's a it? neoprene mat. Okay, and then you had constructed all of the walls mm. and all the set dressing, a lot of set dressing, and mm. really added a lot of a lot of. A good theme to it. Um, I uh, I enjoyed it in the straight way. I was like, oh, this is a co-op game. Oh, brilliant! The co-op games are all about that. Yeah, totally. And then it's like, well, there is there is a, a win. You can win over your, your your the other player by when you all return to your ship, you can sort of your what you've mm. managed collected, and therein lies a winner. But you can, if you want, go rogue. And yes, thought, you can go rogue you, at, you can, at, yeah. at a point, okay, can't you, Matthew? Let, let, let's just stop there before we go go any further. I think I think the way I presented this was is um, you can cooperate fully and you can decide to go your own way, do your own bit of looting, and then both get out safely. And when the purge arrive, you can work together, work absolutely together cooperatively against the common enemy. So let's discuss how that turned out. <laughs> well, when, because of the, obviously there's the six points of entry into the map for the Purge, and I was getting something, I was very lucky, and they were all over Rich's side. So I thought, well, I've, I'm at a point now where I can see the threat level's about to hit the next level. I'm quite close to my ship. Everyone's inventory's full. I've got some good gear. So I just might start making them my way back. Mm. And, thought, the, and this gear you're picking up. Uh, you're not just storing it in a backpack. You're actually you're actually equipping better weapons uh, as you're going along. So what exactly. one of the things that happens is when you first start this game, you've got a very basic uh, loadout. You'll have two of your characters will have a stim pack, uh, and the others will have maybe a knife or a handgun or or a very shitty rifle, the kind of stuff you'd pick up in the local uh, vending machine. It's um, out of Marcus's vending machine on uh, Borderlands. Yeah. It's that sort of wanky gun. Yeah. <laughs> so one of your, so one of your first objectives as a player is to get your to get your traders better geared up as soon as soon as possible. So there, there's kind of like this mad rush to the nearest crate, <laughs> and I love the crate system because you've actually got these physical crates with lids on them that you pick them up and you, and you and you pull them out into your hand, and you can see what little bits of gear that you've got, and you're kind of looking at it, and you don't have to tell the other person what you've got because you're doing your own thing. Um, so so that was very much what happened at the start of the game, and then the purge started to appear, and this the early purge were dealt with pretty quickly um, because. In isolation, on their own, the basic purge, the harvesters, are pretty easy to deal with. 
Although if they get into contact with you, they get a, they get an attack on you. So you know you are, if you're not careful, you can you can start losing health quite rapidly. But Matthew, what uh, what what happened with, with you? Well, what, I also, what the hell happened with well, you? Well, I also would like the fact that uh, during any turn, if any player takes a shot, that also automatically increases the threat level. So I thought, well, if I could just because Rich has got further to go to get back to his ship than I have, mm. and he's got purge in the way. I thought maybe if I could just fire off a couple of shots to increase the threat, and also maybe novel one of his characters at the same time, then I'm 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 in it to win it, and I could just I can just book it and do one. Yeah, uh, which was very much the aim with with a, with a, an area of effect splash damage right a rocket launcher that I'd picked up. I was like, well, I, I I'm totally sorry, Rich, but we're doing this now, <laughs> and, and, that, and, and that, we did. And naturally, <laughs> naturally, Rich didn't take kindly to that uh, that, that that turn of events. Yeah, that's. That big knife in the back. Yeah. So, so, so what did you so, do? What did you do about that? So Rich? we so we attempted to retaliate, which with the hand grenade style rocket weapon, I can only describe as a Chinese firework. It didn't really do what it was supposed to do, you, and that was retaliate into You Matt. rolled poorly, my friend. You rolled poorly. <laughs> but yeah, mm. I had a, I had quite I I'd committed quite a long way, and uh, I. It was always going to be at some point that people turn it. It's, it's not the it's not the game where you just go in right. Let's let's play, search the chests, and run off. At some point, you are going to fight. You got you you've got to because mm. the, you you're picking up a similar amount of equipment. You get to mm. a similar number of chests. The victory points on the items you're getting are very similar. So the best way to reduce your opponent's score. Is to nobble one of his pack mules, <laughs> get all that stuff dropped on the floor, mm. and uh, leg it with your mm. three as opposed mm. to his two, or even one if mm. you get that far in. Uh, Muggins here forgot that was a good idea when Matt decided to open his orbital laser cannon thing with a area <laughs> effect on my face. And uh, yeah, things went tits up from there in. Mm. Well, I, I had to because you also had recruited um, one of the civilians on the board, so you had an extra mule as well. And I knew that if all three of us got back as we were, you were likely to to win that. Uh, and again, I, I knew this. I knew the the purge were on your tail as well. I, it, it didn't go as well as I hoped. You did. You did take out my captain, and then we realised that okay, I could maybe get over there. And revive him, and get him back, or get over there and drag him back very slowly. Yeah. But the the purge were coming. I mm. thought he's he's gone. He's yeah. gone. Out. All the while that you <laughs> pair decided to open fire on each other, and I kept saying, "Okay, guys, this is this is a choice you're making, but bear in mind, every single round there's a there's a purge activity, and more are going to spawn." But no. You're just shooting at each other, trying to kill each other, thinking about the money, which is actually the, the, the it, it's still a valid strategy, um, and it's interesting because as soon as as soon as the game completed, and I think yeah, was it you that won Matthew that one, Matthew? Yes. I, I got two dudes back in, yeah. which only got the one, so I think yeah. Yeah, it was an easy win. Yeah, and 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 it, and it was great because once once it had all been done, Matt Connor said, "Do you know what?" I want to play that again. <laughs> says, well, why don't you and Rich play an, an old GM? So I was like, fine, okay. So we, 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 we kind of reset it all and we went through all the setup, uh, the, the, the resetting of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, the, the counters, etc. So we had a whole new let of, uh, set of gear put into each of the crates. And then uh, Rich and I uh, played. And yeah. uh, it, it, it speaks to me uh, the variability of the game because it turned. It, it played out a little differently and I think it played out as you and I we, we kind of had a conversation and again I love this game because you're having these real world conversations with your opponent and trying to trying to secure their um, you know secure agreements right we're not we're not going to attack each other we're just going to do what we need to do and um, and we kind of had that conversation at the beginning so we were running around in our own little space we were dealing with purge as they arrived and I, I made a decision at some point to say, right, do you know what? My inventory is full. I've got, I've got some good stuff going on here with the stuff that I've collected. Uh, I'm going to start making my way back to my ship because I don't want to lose any of this mm. stuff. And you started thinking along the same lines, but some, some, some more difficult purge were starting to arrive who are, who are quite brutal. Um, 
I'd, do, I'd done the overextending myself bit, again, having it, not learned from the first it, game. It, it is so easy to do. It's when the greed mentality takes over from your common sense. Um, but I think I think it reached a point where I had you in my line of sight, and I even took the measure to say, right, what kind of range am I in? But unfortunately for that round, I think we had an event that said that there was a coolant leak and that energy weapons yeah. ran a risk of um, igniting stuff and inflicting uh, damage on the on the person that used the weapon. Yeah. Uh, because I had this, I had this phenomenal weapon. I would have been able to have unloaded an entire clip into you, uh, not once but three times. Uh, but because of that event, that completely changed my approach to that round. And instead of me just trying to nobble one of your players, to Matt's point earlier, I just thought, you know what, I'll just get all my guys back and he's got some purge over there that he's going to have to deal with. Hopefully one of them will take one of his guys down. But we both made it back to we our both, ships. I managed I? to get out with all three of them. Yeah, yeah. And then we, we sat there and tallied up all our, uh, all our worldly goods and uh, it turned out we, uh, we both won. Yeah, that's how I'm looking at it. Yeah. because we both got the same score. Yeah, it was it was a draw. Yeah, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I I, I really we had really no idea it. until because we hadn't counted up how yeah. that was going to go t- until the end. Yeah, because yeah. I honestly thought you'd manage to get off with more because mm. things weren't going well, <laughs> and I just thought to myself, <laughs> you know what, the the crown the, the the icing on this proverbial. Is going to be Darren winning by one point after I've gone through all the shit to get three people <laughs> off the board. <laughs> one thing I'll say about this game, this is one of the things that I suppose can turn me off the idea of these sort of games is the amount of setup and prep there is. I know you mentioned that you could have done it ahead of time, you could have done it last night, but mm. I think that's that, that is something that sort of just does. It's one of the things that video games does for me. Yes, that is always an advantage with, with, with digital is you, you, you press your on button and you fire up the game and it, it's all there, it's, it's all preloaded. But I actually really enjoyed the ritual of setting up a game and, te- and tearing down a game. So, I mean, you, you'll see the way that the, uh, that the terrain was constructed. You've almost got, got a, it's a little Lego set. And uh, hey, who doesn't like playing with a little bit of Lego, doing a little bit of construction? So... Um, but yeah, the, the, this is kind of one of those games. If you were going to bring it to the table and you had a gaming group, you probably want this to be the first game played in the evening or in the session, and you take some time out before everyone else arrives to set it up because it does take about 40 45 minutes. I anticipate that will come down with time. Mm. And, uh, and and bear in mind, we that the the mission we played was kind of like a one shot, like a like a side mission. Uh, there is actually a full campaign within the uh, within the core set. I think it's uh, 10, 10 missions, uh, which span an entire story arc. So while uh, and we didn't really see the benefit of this, but there's a whole progression tree for each of your characters. You're earning skill points and your your and they use this fabulous dashboard where you've got your character and you've got your uh, your class and you can assign and as you upgrade and earn XP you can assign additional skills which will allow you to spend uh, skill points to uh, during the during the session to do these special things. Mm. And we didn't really see a lot of that because we just started with the default default setup. In addition to that there's the whole ship upgrade side of things, which we didn't explore at all. So you take it, you're, 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 you're adding extra parts to your ship that will allow you to do special things during the game. You might be able to pull you out somewhere in an, in an emergency. Um, so there's, there's, a deep, there's a deep progression system underneath the layer of this game, which, I mean, I've spoken before, I love, I love a good story, I love a good campaign with it within a game, so I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to exploring that. And, and the guys at Battle Systems, they're, they're a UK-based company, they've been producing this terrain for about, for about seven, seven or eight years. Um, this is their first foray to actually produce in a full-blown game. Uh, they went on to Kickstarter, it was very successful, even after the Kickstarter finished, they continued to develop the system because they want. They were very clear that they wanted to future proof. They see. A, they see. A, they see a good. A good future for this game. They want it to be widely supported, and they and they they in turn are widely supporting the development of the game. So I can go onto the website, and every couple of weeks they'll put a new mission up on the site. So you just download the PDF, and you've got a whole new map to play. 
Um, there's expansions. And another great thing that I really like about this is that there was loads of extra content created in the Kickstarter, but none of it is Kickstarter exclusive. So any, any of the extra stuff for like the Balls Deep edition is getting released to retail over the, over the coming months. Mm. And these guys are at the UK Games Expo. We can't wait to go and, uh, go and uh, introduce myself to Colin and tell him what a, what a great game Asking uh, you during the holiday. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I think that's what the missus are Because I've actually taken the good lady to the UK Games Expo. Yeah, she, she's got no interest in board games, but I've made sure, uh, for some for some reason, she's agreed to come along with me. But um, it's to keep an eye on your wallet. Bless, that's bless why. Well, yeah, no, she's, she's, she's awesome in that regard. She she sees it as well. It's something that you enjoy. So you know, you could you could be out on the lash every Saturday and, and coming back in and uh, you know yeah. with, with a. With a with a stinking head or, or whatever, so no, very supportive in that regard. Um, but I, I, I really enjoy this game. It's one of it's one of the, the my favourite games of twenty nineteen to date. Mm. I can quite quite safely say, and I'm looking forward to to going to the Battle Systems uh, stand at the the Games Expo and see if I can pick up some more goodies, maybe some uh, some crew expansions. That would be nice. A bit more crew to, uh, to to choose from. And I'm looking through the uh, the booklet as well, the rules. Mm. Uh, it looks like you can, if you decide, paint those miniatures. Oh, you can, yes, yes. So I'm look, I'm looking at Hello. Rich. I'm, look, <laughs> I'm looking at, I'm looking at Rich because one of the first things I saw when I got here, he's got these uh, Warhammer Forty K uh, figures that are beautifully painted, and I and I've been thinking all along. I said, I, know, I think I probably need to commission uh, a, a, a set of these to be uh, to be painted. So I'm kind of kind of looking at you longingly, Rich, and. Uh, I'll offer you. Uh, I'll offer you sexual, um, sexual stuff in return. Well, should, should you right. choose to accept? Deal done then. Oh, very nice. Okay, I better go and uh, brush my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so then, quick round the table. Final, final few uh, words on core space and no, your experience it's, with it. It's very, very good and engaging. I liked it. Yeah. yeah I've... Financial difficulties aside, I will get it. Yeah. Oh, I say difficulties. I mean the Bloodborne Kickstarter. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> has to be paid for pri- course, primarily because I, I like you, have got that on the on the horizon. But yeah, uh, yeah that's uh, it's definitely one to go in there. Yep, tons of fun. Tons of fun. There you go. So it sounds like it's better than um, than uh, Endgame. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> that was just all right. <laughs> There you go, Battle Systems. You scored your, a big one for Matthew. That's your tagline. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that, 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 yeah, that's the box quote. Call <laughs> Systems, better than Endgame, which was all right. <laughs> and, uh, and and similar to uh, similar to last year's Home Invasion, when we went up to Scotland to see, uh, to, to see Steve and Derek, uh, we bust out No Thanks, which, um, which, funnily enough, Matthew goes, I don't remember playing this. <laughs> Yeah, very, very, very basic uh, game. You just got a, uh, a set of uh, thirty-five cards, and um, you draw, you take nine out, and the rest are put in a stack. And you turn a card over, and you decide whether you want to take it or whether you put a chip down. Each each player starts with eleven chips, and it's it's a bit of a bluffing game and a, and a push your luck um, uh, kind of kind of setup. I think this ex- this game kind of explained why I was cack at core space. Because you two guys managing to get loads of that stuff on there, and mm. both times in core space, I got knackered over by a, a slight a bluff slash uh, shenanigan from you, and I was shit at no thanks. You weren't you weren't that bad. You, you weren't that bad. No, I was going for for a four figure score by the end. Yes, <laughs> yes. The idea was to score the lowest points. Yeah, possible. I misunderstood that. If I went on pointless, I'd be yeah. trying to get a hundred points. <laughs> But that that was a that that was a fun guy. Yeah, yeah, it was. A bit, a bit, bit more no thanks. But we ran we rounded off the evening with, uh, and I was so glad you were able to get this to the table because I know you're you're kind of feeling the love with it a lot at the moment. And I've loved this game. I've um, I've, I've been quite heavily involved in Marvel Legendary and the associated Legendary series because it's actually a, a it's it's a thing with um, with Upper Deck Entertainment. Um, but we did. We played Marvel Legendaries as a three-player game. Max' first experience, I I understand, with a proper uh, sort of a game with a with a deck builder mechanic. So that would mean starting with a shitty hand and kind of developing, buying better cards, which go into your into your stack, and then they get shuffled in, and you and you, you're kind of building. You build. 
it's almost like an engine that you're building up and you and, the, and depending on the cards that you buy you understand that some of those will synergize well with other cards you've already bought and you're kind of you're dealing yourself your hand hoping you've got something that, that evolves into a killer combo because ultimately with uh with marvel legendary our goal is to defeat um the the uh the mastermind the, the, the mastermind and they have a they have a devious plot. Yeah, they have an evil a, scheme a, a, an to evil, run. Yeah, an evil scheme that uh, that they're trying to run to uh, to to defeat you, and we're there to stop it as the uh, as the Marvel superheroes. It's a proper good versus evil comic book style story. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this and this was the this was the first game out of the Legendary series, and it was um, it was very well well received when it first launched, and they've con- continued to to evolve the concept, and they've released numerous expansions for uh, for, for for Marvel legendary and they've actually branched off into uh, in, into other areas as well other other uh, other franchises, franchises we could yes. say so you've got uh, you know you've got firefly you've got buffy you've got um oh what was what was the film i mentioned last night the um uh, big trouble in little big china big trouble in little china uh, they've recently bought you got the x files is a version x files aliens predator, predator and they have secured the bond franchise which is hopefully going to release later this year if their uh, press release is correct that could that, would, that, that is going to be lovely. the bond one is going to be I'll so be good all over that like oh, tramp on chips yeah. that's going to be <laughs> yeah well yeah. look it's a track to wine yeah yeah, I, I, quite, I quite dig this. So um, I, I like, obviously I like the Marvel franchise. I know most mm-hmm. of the characters. Um, all the artwork on all the cards is, is lush. Um, but from a deck building point of view, yeah, I, I did like the idea that, okay, I'm, I'm starting off with, what, my, my, my six cards. And I, I, so in, my, in my head, I was able to sort of separate them. Okay, these are all do with purchasing power and these are do with, uh, with causing damage. And, and as, as each turn goes, we, 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 we open up, we, we reveal a new enemy that's going down the line and we're having to, having to manage the progress of that enemy while also having to not take our eye off the ball with the, uh, with the mastermind and their scheme itself. And it was nice to be sort of thinking, okay, well, I can't do much on my first round. I can't take out any of these enemies, but I can buy that card. And that card's good. Even if it's just more buying power for the next time it comes up, it's it's all gravy. So the next time I I, I finish with my deck and I shuffle what I've got and I I, I deal myself with six, I'm thinking, right, if I get get that Storm and if I get that Gambit and I also get a bit of purchasing power as well... Mm. I could probably do something pretty sweet the next, the next, the next, next round. And although the three of us, so the three of us are working together, taking it in turns, there were a few times where we sort of stopped and had a little conversation. Like, okay, so what of our big bads? Who's a big risk to us? He is in the middle. He's he's on the rooftops. Now, mm. it just so happens that my storm that I've got in my hand does extra damage to characters on the rooftops. But if we allow another enemy to come out, it will push everybody up more, and he won't be as easily defeated by me. So, we're like, right. If you could take this guy out, I've got a good chance of taking out Juggernaut <laughs> over there. And that, yeah. I, I don't know if that happens much in, in, in this game specifically, but I, I, I enjoyed that moment of thinking, like, guys, do, I, I don't know if I should tell you what I've got because we are key, but we're not necessarily showing our hands off until yeah. we until it comes to that moment. Mm. I mean, I don't know if there's a, is there a reason why not to. You can do if you want. Yeah, it, it, but broad, entirely... broad, broadly, what happens is somebody will say, I've got the ability to take that person out. Because at the end of your turn, you draw your new hand up. So you've already seen yeah. in front of you what you're doing on your next turn. And this is where the collaboration really shines. And we, and I'm glad we saw a few examples of it last night where it was say, right, I can deal with that enemy. So And then you would say, well, that's great because I can do this, 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 and this. And we were having to keep, in the scheme we were playing, yeah. it was quite important in that particular one that we kind of had to try and keep the bank free because... Mm. Each of those squares that are getting pushed down have got a location name on, as you said, they've got rooftops on there. And we were playing one where Magneto had decided he basically wanted the Federal Reserve for himself. Mm. So the bank square was enhanced, if you like, for the yeah. opponents. So getting keeping that clear yeah. meant, you know, if we got a choice, it's him or him. Well, he's in the bank. Do that one. Yeah. Um, that that made, made it mm. or brought an extra dimension to the yeah. decisions we had yeah. to do to keep things... Under and, control, and all the while that this is going on, and we're managing these villains that are spawning at the start of every turn. 
Uh, we've still got the mastermind who, the, you know, our winning condition is to defeat this mastermind and we need to slap him five times. So always in the back of your mind is, right, have I got enough to attack the mastermind or do I need to spend that attack power to try and mitigate the flurry and the swarm of enemies that are piling onto the board? And, uh, and sometimes you've got enough to do both, particularly late game when you've got some really powerful cards in your hand. Yeah, I'm going to take that, uh, that Sentinel down and I'm going to slap Magneto in the testicle. I saw some great end game work from, uh, from you, Dan. And it must be something you're used to because you've played this a, a lot more than I have. But you'll, you'll have, every, you have an order of events when it comes to your card. You'll go, right. I'm going to open that one first, which means I can look at the top card of my deck, see what's coming next, and I can choose to keep it or discard. Okay, I'm going to keep that. Then I'll play this card that says I'm allowed to take that card that I've just looked at and I know is nice, so I'm going to take that. Right now, I'm going to slap my keto in the balls, and I've still got a bit of purchasing power over here to get one of these. And I can, geez, all I'm doing is trying, is trying to see how much damage I could cause in each, in each round to take out a bad, but there are, there are, there are obviously tactics. And now, what, one thing I'll say about this, and I, I, I mentioned it as soon as we finished, I said, that was easy. Mm. I've, we didn't, at no point did any of the enemies reach the end of that lane to go into anywhere else. Mm. It, it, it seemed very, and, but, so when we were causing so much damage at the end, it was like, what, we may as well just mm. take another kick at Magneto because there's no, there's no point yeah. not to right now. Yeah. But you were telling me that even in the base game, there's a couple of different masterminds which take more to... yeah. So what we did was, uh, and, I, and I think it was important for our, for, particularly for your first play, is that we, we kind of set the game up slightly in our favour because one of the one of, one of the mastermind and a lot of the cards that came out, the criteria was unless you've got an X Man in your hands, something bad's going to happen to you. So we loaded the heroes because you you allowed five heroes. Yeah, it's five heroes, and we picked five heroes. We so picked five X Men. We, we picked five X Men. So that immediately gave us a bit of a bit of a subtle advantage. But also, the uh, it allowed us to synergize our, our cards pretty well because there was a lot of cards we played ourselves that said if you've already played an X Men in your turn, you get extra good stuff. And if something something else as well, your two colleagues also get to take yeah. a look at their next yeah. cards as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But you can you can set you can set things up any way you want. You can you can scale the difficulty to whatever whatever you need. And as you get as you as you buy into this game more, there's more and more expansions um, that. I mean, Upper Deck kind of acknowledged, based on feedback from uh, from players of the core set, is that it was a little easy overall. So you'll see the later sets that come out, the masterminds get a lot more difficult and provide mm. a lot more of a challenge. And if you've got enough of this stuff going on, um, there's even apps. I mean, I've got an app on my, uh, on, on my phone. It's called the Assemble app. And what I do is I just hit a button and it just randomizes. It says, right, well, this is your mastermind. This is your scheme. These are the heroes you're using. This is how you set up the, uh, the the villain deck, and it's just one button press. So you're not yeah. sitting there scratching your head, going, "Oh, what am I going to do today?" Just let just let randomization ruin your life or make it or make it great. <laughs> That's one of the great things for it, because a lot sometimes people say for a game, how much play replayability is is that in that in that game? If you've got that 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 scenario that we played last night. We could have made that slightly more difficult by saying, right, okay, what we're going to do is we're not going to use a single X-Men character, mm. which would have meant every time Magneto kicked off, we were getting an additional shoe-in because we had yeah. no way to stop him. Mm. But by playing with the X-Men character, you shift the difficulty just yeah. slightly in your favour. Yeah. And all those bits, as you say, they're interchangeable. So you can pick a... You can pick a mastermind there, but then the the villains can come from all different sorts of places because it represents all those. So you can have the ones, if you like, Bullseye and so on from the Daredevil mm. comics, but you don't have to use Daredevil as one of your heroes. Mm. You can just have them show up and just want to kick off mm. and, and what have you. So deliberately cross-pollinate, cross-pollinate in the heroes and the mm. themes and the, the things they're from, you can create different difficulty levels ranging from absolute piss easy when you fight Red Skull with the Avengers yeah. through to things like you've got um, Apocalypse who can fetch the Four Horsemen and you can just have 
Spider-Man trying to take him out by himself. You know, it's just... Yeah. Yeah, so let's, let's see how would your witty quips get <laughs> yeah. you through this. Yeah, and how much is... It, yeah, famine's telling you you're about to wither away and die. Mm. And don't think a web shoot is helping you, sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can you can vary the difficulty so yeah. much and tailor it to how you want to play it. Yeah. And then everyone's got their favourite characters. So yeah. I know you wanted to include Nightcrawler in, in there and... Uh, you know, people are gonna. A lot of people are gonna say it's Deadpool in there. Hmm. Yeah, he is, and you don't even have to get the expansion for it because he's in the base set. Yeah. So you can just pick that up, and everyone can have the merc yeah. with the mouth playing. And but if you do get yeah. the Deadpool expansion, it's very Deadpool. It is very <laughs> funny. Because, it is very Deadpool. Yeah, it's because all, all the cards are even breaking the fourth wall. Yes. On there, so he's talking to the players through the cards, telling yeah. them what to do. It's so well put yeah. together. It's like you get half, you get half, uh, half damage points. As well, so it doesn't. Even, some of the cards don't even give you a full damage point to apply, and it only gives you a half. So you have to like have two together to make the complete damage point to add to the uh, add, to, add to the total yes. damage caused. Uh, it's it, it, it's a it's a great it's a great system. I love it that it can be played uh, cooperatively. You can play it solo. So if you wanted to play that solo, you could uh, you could multi hand. So you could have basically two 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 decks. So you're kind of playing as two people, but you're doing it alone. Um, and for for those listening, if you if you don't if you if you're kind of like a stickler for digital, the great news is you can get this uh, you can get this system uh, right now on Steam or Android. Uh, it's free to play. It's called Legendary DXP. Now, Legendary DXP is basically Marvel Legendary without Marvel. Uh, unfortunately, Upper Deck do not have the digital rights to the Marvel franchise. So what they've done is they've just created their own pseudo-fantasy realm. Uh, it's, it's all... It's all it's all very nice. Sword and sorcery version, it's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's 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 cloaks and swords and uh, and and all that other all that other good stuff. But uh, if if what we've spoke about is of any interest to you and you're curious about finding out more without having to spend any money, uh, that's your place to go. Legendary DXP. Uh, download and enjoy. Uh, yeah. You know there is in-app purchases, but you, you you don't have to spend any money at all. Just find out if you uh, if you enjoy the game and take it forward from there. Uh, round the room, final verdict on the uh, on the playthrough legendary. Oh, I love that stuff. Yeah, oh. yeah, so much so that Upper Deck gave me that stuff and told me to go away. I was badgering them that much. I had to get hold of it. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm 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 invested. I'm invested. I've I've bought a lot of this. Oh, I'm getting. <laughs> It's another reason why I might not end up with core space. No, mm. yeah, because as much yeah. as I love that, it's, I love it, legendary. Still, it still worries me greatly that we we were playing with unsleeved cards. It felt very very strange to me. But uh, oh, I don't know how you do it. Oh, you, it, it yeah. triggered me. It triggered me. <laughs> Matthew, final thoughts. Uh, yeah, you're good. I really enjoyed that. I'm I'm going to go and check out that uh, that thing. I'm, I assume there's got. To, I'm assuming there's some multiplayer in there. Oh, there is. I'll there's uh, there's cooperative and there is playing against a friend as well. Against a friend? Yes. I guess you'll find out. I guess as, I will. As you play, yes. but uh, there's plenty of tutorials in there. So if you've never played the game before, uh, you can learn as you play. How much does that base base version go for? For Marvel. Yeah. Uh, some, £42, some, pounds, yeah, some, about £42. Somewhere pounds. between 40 and, 40 and £45. Pounds. Oh, yeah. it, it didn't take forever to set up. I could see towards mm. the end you were sort of aimlessly sort of putting the cards into different sort of mm. areas oh, to make it Yeah, that, that's up. my board. That's my card game OCD. Right. You don't need to do that. If you're OCD enough, you'd be sleeping. In fact. Exactly. I'm glad well, you no. said that, not me. No. You <sighs> terrible man. <laughs> the first we love you though, do, Rich. We love you. The first thing to do is have each character's cards ordered in cost size from cheapest to highest, then put them in alphabetical order in your box. Yeah, and then that, and then not shuffle them properly when you actually play the game. Yes, and then add too many scheme twists to the deck. Yes, but alcohol had been consumed, so you know we're, counting's not my forte. <laughs> no, that's all. That's all good, and you know across, across the entire uh, you know day or so, um, I. I've really, really enjoyed the uh, the games, and uh, I know Matthew's going to be wending his way home. I might hang around a little while afterwards and maybe play some, yes. uh, maybe a little bit of Magic or a little bit of Memoir Forty Four because I love that game as well. So, um, Rich, tell us, uh, talk to us a little more about your um, your other activities that are going on because this isn't this isn't the first podcast 
you, well, it's the first time you've been on this podcast. Been on but, your podcast. But you're, you're no stranger to the podcast world, my friend. Uh, no. The recently started Year of Shame 2019 mm-hmm. is uh, is the other one. So there's myself, Steve Attica, and Toby Jaden from the community are doing this year's challenge, which is essentially not to buy any games with a couple of caveats for 12 months. Yeah. Um, people have a different set of rules and objectives that they will try mm. for taking on the challenge. Some people it might just be, I don't want to spend money. Other people use it as a way to focus their playing yeah. on stuff they've already bought uh, and reduce that cost, uh, sorry, that, that amount and therefore mm. the cost of what they've got outstanding, if you like. Uh, yeah, so we're doing that monthly podcast. Mm. Um. I myself have uh, I've got a, a brief to try and take down as many of my open world games, so I don't have that many games in comparison to Stephen Toey. Yeah. Uh, or there, so I'm trying to get myself through Red Dead Redemption. I've attempted uh, the Mankind uh, Desex Mankind. Is it divided the last one? What? what whatever the most recent one I had. Yeah, but. It was dull, so it got Matthew Maud. <laughs> um, I, love, I love that that's actually a thing. Is yeah, because the game gets the Matthew treatment. <laughs> we have, yeah, we have, we have, ca- there's ca- categories that we all have a spreadsheet so that people can see what we're doing with them. So you have one for not started through to six, which is an evergreen, uh, which you're, you've completed, but you're going to come back and, you know, it's still old content because you want to keep playing it. And uh, the second stage is it's been categorized as number two, which is known as doing a Matthew. Um, so it's been given 20 minutes and you're either not going to come back to it or you might just bin it off uh, and have done. So we do, in tribute to Mr Moore, have a have a test to see whether or not it's worth continuing how, how do you, with. How do you feel about that, Matthew? Honoured. Yeah, so you should. So you should. What what I've always admired about the, uh, the the Year of Shame challenge is there is that there is that inbuilt flexibility when you're setting your goals... At the start of the challenge, you almost um, you're you're selecting your difficulty setting as if you were starting yeah. a video game, and you can you can set yourself a, a, a moderate challenge. You could challenge yourself really hard, or you could just build it in a way that nothing really happens and nothing really changes in the way you do from from day to day. So to to give you an example, and I'm glad that nobody does this. Uh, I could I could join the Year of Shame challenge and say right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy any video games this year. Doesn't impact me whatsoever because <laughs> I don't buy video games. <laughs> yeah. Any 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 digital content I, uh, I I play is is broadly downloadable for free and, uh, and and free to play, which would be acceptable. And and I'm left to to do what I normally do, which is plow my money into magic and and cardboard. But if I wanted to set myself a real hard challenge, I could say right, not only am I not going to buy any digital content, but I'm going to stop myself buying any analog. Now that would be that would be a, a real challenge for me. Well, do you have this sort of mentality that if I don't jump on a Kickstarter, I may not be able to get it at all? There's a, there is a there is a, a, a FOMO element, fear of missing out. Um, and I'll be honest with you, while I've been quite deeply entrenched in magic, um, I've kind of I've kind of stepped away a little from the whole Kickstarter universe. Although they can't. You know, if if you look at what what Kickstarters I've got coming in, you'd say, Darren, you're full of shit. However, with with Kickstarter, as people know, is there are things that you'll have backed twelve months ago, which you're still waiting on delivery on. So I'm still got the tail end of my heavy Kickstarter involvement. I've still got a lot of stuff to come in, um, and I've kind of fallen back into the Kickstarter mm-hmm. trap over recent weeks. So we've gone with um, the Bloodborne. With, with, with Bloodborne, I've got uh, Space. Um, oh, I can't even remember the name. Of it. Resurgence. Something yeah, or other. yeah. It's 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 basically uh, Starship Troopers, uh, the, the the game, um, but. <laughs> You know, in in name only, and and some other stuff. Got the Assassin's Creed game coming, and, and a few other bits and bobs. Um, but in terms of challenging myself, um, for me to for me to come on and say, right, I am not going to buy any video game, uh, any board games this year. 
that for me would be a monumental challenge. So, I um, was asked by Steve or I say was it uh, Kev Matt, that, that's what I was leading said, to. Uh, what, were, were, were things suggested to other people to say right? Well, come on, you're saying you're not going to buy any uh, buy any uh, video games, but I know you spend a lot of money on board games. So, what are you going to do about that? I was asked whether or not I'd be including that. Yeah. No, it was a hard no. It was def- it was a definite no. Was that, was that a red line that wasn't going to? Yeah, be there was a line. I wasn't going to not commit to buying board games. And how are you finding Never. the whole podcasting thing? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, well, isn't it? You haven't got to do any editing, have you? So you, well, you no, you no. Have, you hit the fun bit like this treacle. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so Steve, Steve, bless him, does all the editing. He has to make sense of what me and Toby say. Mm. And how, how often are you producing content right now? I'd like to say a month. And it has been a month, but we're getting very close to the end of this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing we're, about, we're doing about two podcasts a month at the moment. <laughs> 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 the real lies that I had to pick up, I had to pick up the phone and make sure there weren't a bunch of milk bottles outside Darren's house. Was that we were playing poker, weren't we? We had a poker night on um, uh, Texas Te- uh, um, Prominence, Prominence poker, poker on the PlayStation Four, and we we're chatting away. Anybody here from Darren? Like and then <laughs> these guys went. Uh, says, "When are you doing your next show?" I said, "Oh, yeah, we just record or something. It'll be going out at the end of this month." And I looked on, on iTunes and like, "You're doing more. You've got more shows out this year than we have." <laughs> right, not <Yeah>. this. <laughs> Too hard. It's not too hard right now. Yeah, it's 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 good. It's, it's enjoy- Really, I really enjoy it. Mm. I don't have my own. And there's a there, Facebook there. group for it. There is. You're a shame. Challenge. I want to say. <laughs> I don't do the. Do- I don't do domestics. Well, it's, it's, if you listen to the I'll, podcast, I'll, I'll you know you what, I don't I'll, do domestics. I'll drop a link in the show notes. I can okay. send them to you yeah. because we are. It, it, I mean, the the, the challenge and the, and the community behind it are generally quite ingrained with the midlife gamer community already. Yeah, it's already people from within there. Mm. And the great thing is with that there, everybody who's joined it and is playing along has set their own rules. So we and. We sometimes get people in, oh, is this against the rules? Mm. And it's quite easy to answer that. It's, yeah. It depends what rules you set yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do, like Darren said, whether if he include, came along and included that, then that would have been a rule set he'd set himself. Yeah. Mine, I, well, I'm not including it. I'm letting myself buy board games. Mm. Um, and, you know, you can allow yourself... Some people say, oh, we're buying DLC for whatever. Some people say, yeah, I'm going to let myself buy DLC. Because it's for something that I've that I already own, and I'm getting more out of the experience, and that's what they want to do. Other people say no, DLC is paid, new stuff, and you and I'm not going to do it. But both are equally valid. It depends on what set of rules you set yourself. You don't have to be a strict, say, the masochistic. I am not spending a penny person. I guess, it, and I guess it's down to what your what your uh, what your vision of success looks like. Because if you want to come away from that twelve months saying, "Right, well, I've saved a load of money," then you are gonna you are gonna have to make some difficult choices because we know the hobbies that we love and enjoy uh, they come at a cost, like all mm. like you know almost all good hobbies. You know, if you're into motorbikes, you're going to be buying bikes, and you're going to be maintaining your bike, and you might get another bike, and it, it goes on and on and on. So. Um, you know, this isn't just exclusive to, to, to gaming. Any, any hobby requires a, an element of financial investment. I suppose there must be some people out there who is, although they're not going to stop themselves buying what they what they love, and there might only be two or three games in the year they're definitely going to get, but they may also be aware that they've got 80 games they've never touched. Yeah. So maybe less about saving money, but more of tackling said pile mm. of shame. Yeah. yeah, and that's where yeah. people have the... Di- we we have encourage people to set their own objective for what it is and then yeah. use the rules... To kind of help them get there. Mm. So like that, if you've got 80 untouched games and you think to yourself, you know, I, I really don't want to buy anything this year, but 80 games not done. Mm. I really should get on the year of shame and force myself yeah. to take down some of that 80 because mm. otherwise I'm going to come to next year when I do buy something and the piles yeah. get bigger. And, and, and I'm as guilty as the next person for, for, for that with, with, with board games. You know, uh, I've, got, I've got a load of games that are still in a shrink that I've not played. But I, I enjoy I enjoy the fact that they're in my collection and that at any point I could just get up and say, Do you know what? I'm gonna play Cruel Necessity have today. You, have you got contents insurance in your home? Absolutely, and it's pimped. Have you, have you specified it's, Yes. You have? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Future Darren will not regret what past Darren has done. 
I need to write down that as a military <laughs> thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, and it's a really good point, Matt. Um, and, and for listeners out there, uh, just a PSA, check your contents insurance. Make sure that it's suitably covering what you've got in your home because... You know, with our with our hobbies being quite expensive or can get quite expensive, you want to make sure that you're uh, that you, that you're suitably covered. We've turned into a consumer podcast. Oh, turned into Radio there. Four. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have Women's Hour, which is so much better than loose women. It's actually intelligent women talking intelligently. But now, shipping forecast. Oh yes, yes. Oh, I love a good shipping forecast. Oh. Especially when it says this is on the way from China as part of your Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's the whole thing. Uh, it's interesting, actually. It uh, doesn't really impact uh, UK or European listeners. It only impacts uh, you know anybody listening from in the US. There's a lot of stuff going on with uh, with Trump and China at the moment, trade wars. And one of the fallouts of that is, if it all kicks off, is that the, um, the cost of uh, exporting games uh, from China... Uh, will go up by 25%. So they, there's a real concern, and a lot of companies are uh, you know, posting uh, information uh, as much as they can right now because we're still in a, a world of uncertainty. But potentially, uh, games that have been kick-started, um, people actually you know, in, in the States may have to, in certain cases, step up and pitch more money and to have the game shipped to them. Um, so it's a... Uh, I mean, I know it's a first world problem. Uh, you know, there's far greater yeah. things to, to worry about in the world. Um, but uh, it, it is something that's been actively spoken of within the within the board game community. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've got to be serious towards you. Well, yeah. let's not do that, eh? No, no. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Next okay. week's guest, Martin Lewis from <laughs> MoneySavingExpert.com. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's all right. I follow him on Twitter. He, he's all right. I, I, don't, I don't mind the, the Lewis... He's all right. That's all I can say. Right. He's all right. So, it sounds like we're coming to the end because we're running out of things to talk about. As much as we would happily love to uh, to spend another couple of hours listening to you, Rich, because you've got so much interesting things to talk about, we're conscious of the fact that we've that we've overtaken your house for a couple of days. Matt is still yet to break your toilet, so I think there's still time before he leaves. Yeah, there's... Yeah. We could join that list along with John Hare. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a good uh, it's a good list to be on. Got to say. <laughs> I'll take that on advice. Got to say. Um, it's, uh, well, domestics. All right, well, you can find the website at midlifegamer.net. You can jump onto the Facebook group and search for Midlife Gamer and join the group and have some fun. Uh, let's not forget as well, we will link it into the show notes that there's the, uh, the Year of Shame 2019 Facebook group. It's worth going in there to get talking about games that aren't necessarily the new mm-hmm. shit. And um, vamp for a bit, I'll and, find it. Yeah. And, and through that, you'll you'll find the links to their podcast, etc. Yes. So, so we've a listen. So, right. So there we go. We got no. I've got the Twitter pages for the three of us. Oh, if geez. people want that, so that's Steve O A at seventy six. Uh huh. That's Steve Adicat at Toby James underscore is Tuds, and at Burton Coggles is mine. That that's is a good Twitter one. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a place. I drove past it on the way home from even camp once. I've, I think, I've driven past Burton. I've never driven past Coggles. It's a, it's a place in it's a place in South Yorkshire, Lincolnshire. Oh, yeah. right, okay. I just nicked it and thought it sounded like a British military officer. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly, I thought the same when I made my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, we have the year of shame at gmail.com podcast, uh, yeah. podcast email address. That's what that'll be. And the Facebook page is just the year of shame. Shameless pimpage. Always happy to have that on the show. Deservedly <laughs> so. Uh, back onto Twitter. Right. Carry on. You're at Midlife Game and Net. Uh, you've got myself at Mantis Matt and Darren Zertz, Uncle underscore Fister. Um, come and join the fun. Come see what's going down. Come Facebook group. Facebook group we mentioned. Yes, come and, come and enjoy that. There's always good stuff going on there. I was just uh, I'm going to scroll through myself. Always something fun going on. I mean, I posted um, about a dozen or so pictures of my uh, my breaking down and my clinging of a PlayStation. Yeah. Oh, it was filthy. Ooh. Dirty boy. It was nice. It was nice. But yeah, other than that, uh, thank you for listening. 
And thank you, Rich, for being such a, a generous host. Uh, I've had a, I've, well, I'll speak for Matthew as well. We've, <laughs> we've, had, we've had a fabulous uh, couple of days up here in uh, sunny Sheffield. And it has been sunny. It has been sunny, genuinely, yeah. yes. Yeah, we've, been, we've been lucky, haven't we, Matt, with, uh, with home invasions. That, I don't it, think there's been a single home invasion where, it's been, uh, where the weather's been rough. It's been a genuine pleasure. Thank you. A genuine pleasure? Yes, mm. as opposed to a fake, knackered, crap one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just glad you're able to remember it all. So, um, okay, well, there we go. We're going to wrap this show up. Um, go uh, go have yourselves a fantastic gaming couple of weeks. Be wonderful to each other. And uh, go balls deep wherever you can. That's, uh, that's what we always say. So until next time, um, just do your thing. Do your thing. Be, be nice. It's nice to be nice. And join us next time when we'll bring you another exciting episode of the Midlife Gamer Podcast. Say goodbye, Matthew and Rich. Bye. Goodbye, Matthew and Rich. <laughs> it's the oldest joke in the book. Yeah, <laughs> but it's still going to do it. <laughs> Down, 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 Dan's got something that I know he's been saving. No, so I've actually had this saved since October last year, and um, it was actually the good lady that identified this. In you, know, you get get on a plane and they hand you a free newspaper. They do that from time to time. Is that the airline version of the metro? I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, they offer you something like the Sun or something a little more highbrow. So <laughs> the Daily Star. So they do, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was the mail or something like that, but the good lady was was reading the paper and um, she came across this article and uh, she she kind of nudged me and said, you've got to read this. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, I, I did, I read it and I found it quite entertaining. I said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to relay it on a show. And it's been, it's been sat in my CPAP machine uh, pocket uh, from a carry case uh, since October last year, and uh, and she, she she reminded me the other day. She's, have you still got that newspaper clip? I said, yes, I have. I'm going to use it. Uh, I'm going to bring it and share it with the guys on the uh, on the home invasion. So, here we go. The headline: Scunthorpe and Rude Boys unite against web censors. Okay, and this is by Mark Bridge. That's I think, I, think I might know why Scunthorpe's okay. involved. <laughs> it, has, it has been voted the least romantic place in Britain. And Ked and Dodd once joked that a pig was kept by a local nightclub as an air freshener. <laughs> now, Scunthorpe, the industrial garden town of North Lincolnshire, has given its name to an enduring technical problem affected, uh, affecting those whose surnames have been a cause of grief since their school days. The Scunthorpe problem is it parlant, uh, is IT parlance for the blocking of innocent uh, words by websites because they contain rude words. It was first highlighted 22 years ago when residents were prevented from creating accounts with AOL because the place name from the Old Norse for Skooma's Farmstead contained an offensive four-letter word. Other similarly troubled locations included Penistone in South Yorkshire and Clitheroe, Lancashire. All right, what's the problem with Scunthorpe? Take the S. Off. And the Whoa! Whoa! Hey, there we go. And, uh, I knew I thought that might be it because I used to be part of a football website. Yeah. And supporters of a certain club were frequently getting their posts taken down by the <laughs> auto mod section because of the because they support and scumfall. The problem persists. This week Luke Anus, 26, a Belgian political candidate, complained that he was prevented by Facebook from campaigning in municipal elections because his ancestral name was deemed too offensive. He was able to get round the ban only by dropping the final consonant. Natalie Weiner, a writer for the sports web website SB Nation, posted a screen grab on Twitter of her failed attempt to register an account on Max Preps, a school sports site. The reason for the ban was offensive language discovered in the last name field. Never mind that the sausage and consequent phallic slang is spelt Wiener, because hers is spelt with the I-E or E-I and Wiener is I-E. Miss Wiener's tweet gained 1,500 responses, eliciting sympathy and solidarity from others whose names have hampered their own online activities, including Cummins, Butts, Cockburns and Glasscocks. Mike Dickman of Cincinnati responded. <laughs> you think you've got problems? <laughs> As a dickman, 
I know the struggle is real. Aaron Dickshit of San Jose, bearer of a venerable Sanskrit surname meaning one who is initiated, wrote, yes, almost a daily occurrence for me. Brian Wankham of Los Angeles <laughs> said that the pro- said he has not only experienced he has not experienced any such problems, only the occasional giggles from the UK. The Scunthorpe problem does not doesn't only prevent people from signing up to websites using their real names or locations. This year, the online ordering system of a US grocery store censored the message on the graduation cake ordered by a proud mother. The company's prudish algorithm edits out the middle word of summer cum loud. <laughs> with the highest distinction which is that, that, that stands for it isn't only rude names that are censored another respondent to Ms Wiener's tweets was Nazi Padikitsi Barnes a, a US woman's chess champion whose first name which means gentle in Georgian is misinterpreted by machines so um, that's actually a, that's a genuine article <laughs> here holding a, a torn out piece of newspaper yeah, but that would have been so much fun to write that article. So <laughs> much fun. Are we buying them all the real? <laughs> Who wrote that? Mark Bridge, and I've got no reason to uh, to, to, to doubt. He's, he's a, I'm sure he's a fine journalist. Yeah, Brian Wankham. Yeah. Mike Dickman. Who's the next one after Dickman? Oh, there was dick all shit. sorts. Was there a dick shit in there? Yeah, I like the dick shit. We all like a bit of dick shit, don't wow. we? Wow. Yeah. It all sounds fun at the start. Mm. Penis turns just down the road. Sorry, Peniston. Peniston, yeah. yeah. 